Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Whether or not you believe it, there is a system that has been at the fabric of human civilization. Hallelujah. And this system has evolved itself through time. Hallelujah. Masquerading itself in secrecy, evolving through human civilization, but one and the same system. Hallelujah. Because you see, the contention of light and darkness is unto one goal. An advocacy of an allegiance. What you see happening in the world system today is the continuation of the desire of Satan. He began this from the heavens and was judged. And all through time, everything that has happened in human history is a contention of light and darkness. To the end, that the allegiance of mankind be submitted to an entity called Satan. And if we do not understand the happenings of this system, we will not, you see, the, the circumference of our understanding must transcend beyond healing. If, come, if this gentleman is sick and has cancer, for instance, and I lay my hands upon him and I say, be healed, and he's healed of the cancer. Um, as good as that is, it falls short of that which God desires for us to know. Are you getting me? Because the cancer in, is in his body because of an ancient story that predates even his existence. Are you getting what I'm saying? We are in the middle of prophecy. We are in the middle of history. And we must understand why the contention. Why is the devil determined to oppress your family? Why is the devil determined to stop you from marriage or stop you from giving birth? Is it just because he doesn't like you? Is that all? Is that all to the story? Why the aggression and the hostility from hell? Why does the devil want you poor and broke? Just because he doesn't want you to have a house? No. You see that? There is an ancient story that predates our existence. And we are just in the middle of history. And we must come to a point where we are taught and we understand. We must connect to history. Then we will be able to appreciate what Jesus did on the cross. And then we will be able to know our roles as individuals and as a church in returning the Christ. Bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Open our eyes in the name of Jesus Christ. Daniel. Daniel lived in a time that was very prophetic, very strategic. The book of Daniel is an adumbration, a foreshadowing of the church, our mandate, our assignment. And the book of Daniel, theologically speaking, gives us the clearest explanation about the system of Babylon. Now, the Antichrist system over time has carried different names. Egypt, Babylon, Jezebel, the world system. Hallelujah. Regardless of the name you call it, it is one and the same system led by the same agenda it has not changed strategies have evolved through civilization but it has been one and the same so daniel found himself in a land of captivity alongside his friends you know in a place called babylon and it was during the time of a king called nebuchadnezzar kings in those days were like gods they were literally gods Aside from their physical stature like Og, the king of Bashan, he was said to be a Nephilim, a giant. Hallelujah. 
Nebuchadnezzar was a very amazing king. And the Bible tells us that at a point, he had a dream. And it was a strange dream. Can you help me with the fan? Please, it's really shifting my Bible. Just shift it a little away from me. Thank you. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and called all his sorcerers and said, I need the meaning of this dream. And when he was angry that they could not interpret the dream, he said, go and kill them. And Daniel said, no, not so. Don't be hasty. Give me time. Hallelujah. Give me time and the interpretation will come. And the Bible says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And in the description of what Daniel saw, he saw an entity made of the head of gold i'm just rushing so that we'll get to the core of the teaching the head was made of gold right the chest was made of silver is that true from the stomach region down to the thigh it was made of bronze and then he began to describe that the feet was a mixture of of iron you know the, the legs were iron and then the feet was both iron and clay now it was a revelation of different dispensations that would come and daniel began to speak to the king that dispensations would begin to come it was it was a revelation of different appearances of the structure of this babylon a godless system hallelujah but then let me just recap a bit to help us understand the bible makes us to understand that a lot happened in the garden of eden hallelujah i know that we know about the old story i've shared it again and again here but maybe for the benefit of those who have not been here for a long time let me just recap again how that the story between mankind and the devil and darkness is an ancient story is that true and i did tell us how that satan is not the opposite of god it's important for us to understand this because what we call eternity is the summation of infinite dispensations is that true and that there was a dispensation where satan did not exist is that true satan was created out of the predeterminate wisdom of god there was a dispensation in time where he did not exist hallelujah Job 38 begins to give us um, a lot of, of, of revelations when God was speaking with Job. Now, when Satan came on board, I told you that the office of Satan in heaven was what? The custodian. The name Satan is not the name of an entity. The name Satan, Satan, means accuser. Right? And devil means what? Deceiver. So he said you shall cast out devils it's not the name of a person it's a generic name praise the lord and then the bible makes us to understand how that um this being was created and according to the order of his fashion because your office in heaven determines both your instrument of creation right and the kind of service you are going to bring and so lucifer was meticulously created using sound piped stringed instruments and i hope you realize that lucifer's jurisdiction of operation was the garden of eden remember i told you the garden of eden was not created for adam the garden of eden existed long before adam are we there lucifer was in the garden of eden the very garden of eden was his habitation and the garden of eden was not in the earth i hope you know it's still intact there there are different planes of heaven as we are taught in the bible the heaven of heavens is where god dwells but there are many other planes those planes are still existent today is that true are we following now i just want us to get the background so that we will understand this concept you see when you understand this there are certain levels of spiritual authority you will stand upon it will no longer be a guesswork or trying to jack yourself into their reality light has brought you into that truth some things no longer will exist because you have found something that is true 
Are we following now? And so, on the strength of Lucifer's office, being the light bearer, he had access to the presence of God. And let me say it again. I'm just doing a recap. I've taught us how that angels grow by what? Excelling in light. Is that true? That's how you measure the age. In the realm of the spirit, we don't age like time. There is no time. So you measure the age of spirit beings by how much they've had access to the throne room. Because every time you meet God, there is an emission, a rub off of his glory upon you. Right? And even in heaven, you do not visit the throne room every time. Because even at that realm, the glory of God is too strong for you to come and stay there. Access is granted unto you. Praise the Lord. And so, because of Lucifer's function, Lucifer means the light bearer, the custodian of the revelations of the heavens. He had unusual access to the presence of God and it increased his beauty and his light. Even among the cherubims, right? He was the most valued. Because you see, before man was created, the order of heaven is the Trinity. Now, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit but he was not called father. I hope you know he only became father when Jesus became son. Is that true? So he was not called father. God Almighty. Jesus was called the word. His name still is the word. Hallelujah. And then the spirit of God. So the organization was God. Now as we know father, son and the Holy Spirit. We have the angelic keda, Right? And then the head of the angels are the seraphs. The head of the seraphs are the cherubims. And the head of the cherubims was God. So directly after the cherubims, I mean God was the cherubims. Are you seeing that? So that access. But now when God created man, what happened? He took man, making him equal, right? With himself. The order changed. So now the head of the seraphs is the cherubim. The head of the cherubim is the woman. The head of the woman is the man. And the head of man is God. Christ. Now, and the head of Christ is God. This is the structure. Are you getting the point now? When you understand the proximity between the cherubims and women, you will know why many women are under the influence of strong spirits. Hallelujah. That's, that's for another teaching. You, you, see, you see that they seem to be the most vulnerable. There is a reason. It's not just because they are ladies. Hmm. Get the teachings. They are all available. Praise the Lord. And so, this rebellion was led. Watch this. The Bible begins to tell us in Ezekiel um, 28 and Isaiah 14, the manifesto of Satan. He said, I will exalt myself above the stars of God. Right? He says, I will be like the Most High. That's what he said. What do you think would have given Satan audacity to want to replace God? To be equal with God means to be a partaker of his nature. To be equal to God means you can replace him. That's what Lucifer wanted. Are you, are you understanding my story? And so he mobilized a lot of the angels in heaven. Apollyon, Leviathan, Baal, Mammon. All these were spirits. Mobilize them in a rebellion to fight. I'm, I'm just doing a quick recap. There's, there are teachings already on that. And for them to fight, they needed to change their original estate. That's what the Bible says. Original estate means your default position of creation. Because in heaven, um, how many of you have seen... Uh, Maybe doctors, when they are going for surgery, they put on their lab coat, right? There is an attire they wear because of their function. That's how it is in heaven. You don't wear clothes like this. Uh -uh. The, the garments in heaven change according to what you are doing. So if you are going to the throne room, you wear a garment called praise. It's not just a song. It's a garment. The psalmist saw it, right? <laughs> he said he will give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Is that true? And so for these spirits to carry out their treason, they needed to leave their original state of creation so that they will assume a structure that will be able to afford them that which happened. And this was shown to John in the Isle of Patmos. He said there was war in heaven. And what happened? 
Lucifer, that rebellious entity attempting to fight because he had known all the mysteries of God by reason of being the custodian of the mysteries. And he said, if this is all God is, then I've read everything. I know every possibility that can be in God. Are you getting my point? And when there was that fight, the Bible says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth when it prevailed not. Remember? Revelations. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth for the devil, that old serpent has been cast down and he comes with anger and great fury. Now, the meaning of that is this. When it was obvious that Satan and his cohort, a third of the angels, the Bible tells us, would not prevail, in their bid to run back to their original estate, they were trapped from the heavenlies. Are you getting me? Never to be like they were again and never to be like mankind. So by default, the devil and all his entities are in a perpetual state of torture. Aside from anything. So they cannot be in a state of rest. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is, it is in the character of darkness to run to and fro. The book of Job. When he asked him, he said, from whence comes that? What did he say? Running to and fro. Jesus gave us a revelation that when a spirit leaves a man, what happens? That means if they can find expression in human vessels on the strength of the fact that man is the highest of God's creation they can assume some position of rest are you getting what I'm saying and so Lucifer led that rebellion and when it did not happen he was cast down to the earth watch this and something happened because you see Perfect love cast out fear. And if God is love for casting Lucifer, he must justify the fact that he was not insecure. And so he created man and gave man everything to prove that it was not because he was afraid like a politician fighting his rival. Are you getting him? Are you getting the story now? So he created man. Angels were created from light. But man was made from the dust of the earth. And the Bible says God took his very cupboard, that image, what Satan died fighting for, and put in the man. My goodness. And then he made him in charge of everything. When that was happening, Lucifer was watching. Hey, Lucifer was not somewhere moving around. Lucifer had access to watch. He saw the creation of man. Are you getting what I'm saying? And when he saw man, he saw God authorize him and give him the seat of dominion. And then, in Eden, Lucifer's very habitation, that was where man was kept. Are you saying that it's an old story? You just know that something happened, your father got up in the morning, one leg could not move. It's an old story. It's not just the issue of healing anointing. It's about understanding the agenda of God. And let me tell you, when you know this, you will do more miracles unconsciously because there is a light from you that will emit everywhere you go. You become a true advocate of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? And so Lucifer, in that situation, came and started beguiling man. And I told you that what happened in the Garden of Eden was a foreshadowing of redemption. Is that true? Because the Bible tells us that authority was given to Adam, the man. Is that true? But Eve was made out of his nature. So she was a partaker of the man's nature. Are you getting the point now? And so when that happened, they had dominion together. Satan ultimately wanted to take off the dominion. And the only way he would take off the dominion, watch this. If God created man in his image, right? And put that man as the highest of his creation. Then it means if that man bows to Satan. What is he saying in essence? If I am equal with Christ and I bow to you. I have accepted that Satan is greater than him. Are you getting the whole dynamics of what happened in the garden? And so for him to do that he came through woman. Watch this. I want to explain to you a very powerful mystery. Please follow me. 
Adam did not fall by mistake. First Peter tells us it was the woman who was deceived, not the man. Let me tell you why Adam fell. Adam fell because according to God's system of love, you have to love unto death to prove that you love. Are you getting what I'm saying? Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Now that the woman had fallen, the man had to follow her because of love. That's why for Jesus to redeem us, he needed to come down and be like us. The same way Adam left his estate to be like his wife. Are you following me now? Are you getting the whole thing? So Adam was not deceived. When he fell, immediately God looked from the heavens and saw the throne that he put man upon empty. And when he saw that throne, it was on account of that. He said, Adam, where are you? He wasn't just saying, Adam, are you naked? What happened now? Don't you know you are an adult? That's not what he was saying. Hallelujah. He saw the throne. It was a spiritual position of dominion. And when he saw it, he said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I had to follow this woman. And God did not rebuke him because that was a true picture of love. And he said, woman, what have you done? She said, the serpent. Satan was very careful to hear the prophecies that will now come out of the mouth of God. And he said, this and that will happen. And he said, the seed will bruise your head. Now, understand that Satan has known that God is prophetic in his statements. The meaning of that was a confusion to him. Because until man came, reproduction had never happened. Only creation. They never knew that it was possible for a man to meet a woman. All of a sudden, Satan saw me, um, I said Mary, um, Eve <laughs> getting pregnant. And then she gives birth to Cain. And Satan says, this is amazing. Thinking Cain was the seed of the woman that was prophesied, he entered into Cain. Are you seeing that? Then he saw that man can still get a woman pregnant again and gave birth to Abel and he made Cain kill Abel. Are you following me now? Genesis chapter 5. I want to show you the origin of the system of Babylon. That's why we are saying all of this. In the highest, let our King be lifted. Oh, Jesus, you be lifted high. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Sorry, 4, 4 verse 16. Watch this. Cain, that rebel, Cain did not even know what happened to him. The devil found expression in him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because he needed to continue that agenda. And watch this. This is the origin. From verse 16. It's projected. Read. One to read. And Cain did what? Stop. What does it mean to go out of the presence of the Lord? It doesn't mean to run away from him. It means to depart willfully from his governing authority. Cain said, God, as far as me and you are concerned, I, I refuse your headship over my life. And Satan said, this is exactly what I want. Are you getting the point now? Cain departed from the presence of God and he went and dwelled in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. 17. And Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch. He had a son. And he did what? Built a city. Watch this. Because the pride of any king, kings name cities after their sons and so on and so forth, representing their future. This was the manifestation of the spirit of the Antichrist. He built a city and he called the name of that city Enoch after his son. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now from this city, Christ or God as we know was not the head of this city. It was a city of rebellion. 
are you getting what i'm saying all kinds of human atrocities began to happen anger envy killing rivalry it was and it was the government of satan the first manifestation of the government of satan that our dispensation records started from Cain. are you getting this now and the bible says the moment that happened we see the first manifestation of the spirit of elijah in the bible it came in the person of noah are you getting what i'm saying the spirit of elijah is not a person it's not a prophetic spirit is the spirit that restores men to the ordinances of God because he said every time a revival is about to happen in the earth there is a spiritual pattern Elijah must show up is that true when 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 there was darkness all around Elijah the Tishbite showed up right Micah Malachi chapter 4 tells us before the day of the Lord Elijah will come again is that true before Jesus showed up who came Elijah in john came in the spirit and the power of elijah now this babylon the spirit of babylon is a governmental system it's a system that is hungry for power and sovereignty and allegiance please understand this that is the reason why babylon oftentimes would operate with kings notice that jezebel married ahab the king the same spirit of jezebel re-emerges in herodias making sure the original wife of the king dies and then jezebel in herodias marries the king is that true herod in your bible and then demands for the head of john the baptist what do you do with the head of a man in continuation to the vow jezebel made to elijah that i will remove your head after many years human beings change but the agenda is still the same are you getting what i'm saying so Noah was the first manifestation of of a true son of God and, and and I've told you again and again that the concept of the sons of God did not start in the New Testament right we see in the book of Job 38 sons of God man was not even made that was during the creation of heavens the sons of God were rejoicing it's an office in heaven sense the power of God very strongly. Are you following me now? Let's see how far we can go. Noah came. What was the instruction? He said, Noah, the earth has become wicked. I need to judge it. He said, build an ark. Theologically speaking, the ark was the, the size of three stadia. Three large stadiums. Right? Three story buildings made of gopher wood. Noah spent 120 years of earth's time building that. He committed his entire life to build the ark. And when that happened, Noah, his wife, the three sons and their wives entered in. And what happened? There was judgment. Is that true? The whole race was white. And out of eight people, the spirit of the Antichrist still thirsty for the continuation of the agenda. What happened? The Bible says Noah drank wine. And he was drunk. And then one of his sons saw his nakedness. I've said it again. That is a coded language. That is more than just seeing a man's nakedness. Don't parents take their, don't children take their parents to the hospital? Don't they bath them? What is it about seeing a man's nakedness that would demand such a cause? It was more than that. It was not just looking at a man's nakedness. There were mysteries that were given Noah. It was that mystery. The spirit of the Antichrist entered one of the sons and made sure he peeped into those mysteries because Satan does not know the future. I hope you realize that it's because he did not know the future that's why they killed many people during moses time if he knew he would look for moses exactly and kill satan is not so accurate you see the goal of this is to demystify this guy that has threatened the nations because speaking he said oh king of tyre he said thou which subdued the nations the strength of evil is deception 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 nations can be deceived and if we are to be ambassadors, we must understand which gives us that which gives us strength in this day and this age. If you're following me, say amen. After the judgment of Noah out of the eight people, 
Satan found expression in one and wickedness grew. Watch this. Genesis 11 verse 1. We see the continuation of that agenda of the Antichrist system. In the first man who originated what we have come to know today to be witchcraft and occultism. He said, and the whole earth was of one language and one speech, verse 2. And it came to pass, this and that, the land of China, verse 3. And talking about Nimrod now, Nimrod Kush. That man, Nimrod, have you read about him? Nimrod, the son of Kush. Now, theologically speaking, Nimrod killed his father, Kush, and married his mother, Semiramite. And today she's the one that is worshipped in many sects as the queen of heaven. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Antichrist entered into Nimrod, a governmental system. See it again. And he said, come, go to let us what? Build a city. Notice that every time that spirit manifests, it seeks to build a city. A godless governmental system that can authorize the activity of darkness in a way to mock God. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you, everything that has happened from Genesis 11 until Jesus came was different ways and strategies for the devil to make sure that this agenda of darkness. So the Antichrist system it's not just a system of witchcraft. It's not just a system of perversion. It's a system that seeks to transfer the allegiance of humanity to any other entity outside of God. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying now? This is a very powerful teaching. If you do not understand this, you, you will be in for a rude shock and you will not have the intelligence to confront the things around your life and to walk in victory. Watch this. When Jesus came, when Jesus came, what happened? Matthew chapter 4, from verse 4. Satan, when he finished fasting, I hope you realize that all Satan had been doing. Do you know the reason why every nation fought Israel? Because of that prophecy, the seed will bruise the head of the serpent. The moment God entered a covenant with Israel, they became the enemies of everybody because he had given them a clue that the seed must come out from that. Are you getting the whole thing? It wasn't just because Israelites were wicked people. No. The moment they became a covenant people, when John the Baptist came into the scene, what happened? The spirit of the Antichrist started moving the scribes to ask, are you the Christ? He wanted to know. Are you the Christ? And John kept confusing them. He said, I'm the voice of one. He said, who are you? Are you the Christ? Don't confuse us. He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Repent. The moment John said, this is my, he said, behold the lamb. When he mentioned that from that time, watch this. Jesus became the enemy of the scribes, the Pharisees and everybody. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, um, Matthew chapter 4. When he took him, he said, man shall not live by bread. That's, he told him, turn this stone into bread, right? Temptation number two. He took him to a pinnacle in the temple and he said, jump. Jump. Many of us would have jumped and died. Because we always like proving we are anointed. <laughs> he would have jumped and died. That would have been it. Case closed. No redemption. Verse next. Now watch this. Watch this. Verse six, please. Let's go to verse six. Or seven, seven. I'm looking for the third temptation. Uh, okay, eight. Let's look at eight. Okay. It says again, watch this. It says the devil takes who? Jesus, your Jesus. Satan told him, follow me. And Jesus went. It's in your Bible. Why? Because he had the keys of dominion. The very key of Adam was in his hands. And God had to respect it. He said, he took him to a high mountain. Where is this mountain in the earth today that when you stand upon, you will see the glories of the world? It was a spiritual thing here. It was not just a, which of the mountains do you stand? 
He says Satan took him into, not upon, into. He entered somewhere. It's in your Bible. He took him into a high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. He said it is mine. I know that you want this. Satan revealed there to us the strategy of the advancement of the Antichrist system. Watch this. This is how Satan markets it. In that mountain there is wealth. In that mountain there is job without struggle. In that mountain there is free marriage without toasting. Look up please. Are you getting what I'm saying? And he said he took him up to that mountain. And he showed him the glory. So watch this. Satan never tells you what you are to do. He first shows you what you will get. So that it becomes difficult to say no. This is what he did to Jesus. He took him there and showed him everything. And then verse 9. And said unto him, all these things I will give thee. Meaning it was within his power to give anybody. Is it true? <laughs> it says, if thou will what? If thou will what? Are you seeing that? That was all. So it's not about money. It's not about cancer. It's not about HIV. It's about allegiance. It's not about witchcraft in your family. It's not about refusing the church from growing. It's not about stopping you from passing jam. It's bigger than that. Satan does not need all those things. It's not about demons oppressing you. There is a bigger story. If you don't understand, you will sit down in spiritual myopia, fighting all kinds of things. Here's the key. If thou will fall down and worship me, the Bible says the same spirit operated in Nebuchadnezzar and he built 90 feet of solid gold. Is that true? And he said, the moment you hear music, everybody do what? Bow. Now, the goal is this. Satan does not want you to bow down directly to him because he, is, he was the God of this system. Watch this. He said, bow down to anything that is not God. It's still the same thing you are doing. Bow down to money. Bow down to women. Bow down to your uncle. It's still the same thing. Are you understanding the, the structure of the Antichrist system? So, the Antichrist system is not just the system of occultism and witchcraft. It's the system that brings your life under compulsion to an allegiance to any other thing outside of the Christ. And there is a way that happens. Are you getting blessed, please? Jesus was eventually going to take back the kingdom, take back the keys. But Satan said, why follow the long route? We can negotiate and I can make this thing easy for you. Why go through all of this, this thing? Just bow down and have it. Right? Why spend years, uh, 10 years and, and almost die building a bungalow? Bow down to me and own estates. That's why the Bible says, what shall it profit a man? Have you read it in your Bible? If he does what? That means you can do business with your soul. The question is, who is buying it? You are the one selling it. Who is buying it? What shall it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? That means you sell your soul. The question is to who? Who is this person that can buy and do business with souls? Revelations 18. Let me show you. We hail you, most high. I hail you, most high. Revelations 18. Let me read very quickly. Watch this. It's going to be a long reading, verse 1. Revelations 18, verse 1. Are you there? And after these things... I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was made bright with his glory and he cried with a mighty voice saying what? Babylon is Babylon the great is falling it says and it's become the habitation of demons and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean beast watch this mystery verse 3 let's see if media can help us 
If you are fast enough to help us, then fine. Otherwise, I'll just go back to my Bible. For all nations have done what? Have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That's why you see women representing that system. Jezebel, Babylon. When they meet prospective kings, when they meet talented people like a harlot comes to a man, they come seeking a fraternity. Bow down to me. Fraternize with me and I will open the gates of the kingdom. I will open the gates of wealth. I will open the gates of grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? It says, and the kings of the earth have done what? Committed fornication with her. And the merchandise of the earth are works rich through the abundance of her delicacies. She made them rich. She made the man a governor. She made the man a president. Voting or no voting? Huh? She made them celebrity stars on TV. Took them from rags to riches. Babylon the Great. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you understand this, you find out that nothing happens in the system until your allegiance to a deity is confirmed. That story of right, nobody rises up from nowhere is a lie. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a spiritual dimension to everything in life. When you see somebody just get up, travels out of the country and comes back and becomes a millionaire. The Bible says, ah, okay, we're in verse 4. The Bible says in verse 3 that the kings committed fornication with her. Let's run to verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived luxuriously shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. So there is a prophecy. The antichrist system will crumble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Already there is a prophecy ahead. That anyone that fraternizes with this system will join them. Babylon is falling. That was a prophecy. The system of the Antichrist will be crumbled. And there is an entity that will make that happen. The name of that entity is called the church. This is why I'm teaching you what we're teaching. The church is not an institution. The church is the name of the spiritual entity that will crumble this system. Verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in what? One hour is your judgment come. One hour. All you will see is the smoke. The smoke of that city. Now watch this. I told you that through civilization, this strategy of the devil has been masquerading itself in ancient times the kings had fraternity with all of these demons of darkness and all of that watch this when jesus came jesus came to bring us back into the allegiance to god are you getting what i'm saying but then from that time till now there is a contention and the contention is twofold number one an opportunity given to every man to individually declare his allegiance and then number two to bring territories under the corporate allegiance of god are you seeing that now so the first dimension is personal that's what you call new birth that's what you call salvation a declaration that i choose i have an option to choose between babylon and this i will show you how that many christians suffer casualty because they claim they are born again but they are still operating in the system of Babylon. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so Satan makes sure that the boss in the office, right, fraternizes with Babylon. He, he will not go to the devil directly. He will go to a harbalist. And they will say, just make sure this and that happens. And you are the boss. And now you come to work, a Christian. You now come to work and you are under intense pressure. Because the presence of that man wants to push you to compromise on your integrity and your allegiance. 
Are you seeing how Babylon works? So you graduate with first class and you hold your degree and you are happy. The moment you enter the labor market, they stop you. They say, not so. Who sent you? Whose allegiance are you? You say, anyone, I need a job. That's the point. That's the point. The devil leverages on your desperation to succeed. Are you getting me? And shuts the mouth of preachers from teaching that the kingdom of God too has a structure for your success. So in your desperation, Satan comes. He came after Jesus finished praying for 40 days. When a man finished praying, don't you need food? Praying and fasting. So he waits until that desperation is there. 29, 30, 31, 32. Your mother tells you, don't return to my house again if you will not bring a husband. And the devil now comes. Babylon, there is an easier way. Bow down to me and a rich man will show up now. And you will think he's play. The moment you bow down, here comes a rich man. Right? And then you come and you begin that fraternity. Satan uses your allegiance to him to mock God. You see that? Let me tell you something. The greatest insult you can give the devil is to stick to God regardless of what happens. I love you whether things go right or wrong and I'm ready to use your system no matter how slow it is. You see why it is important that preachers teach their congregation the kingdom way of doing everything. The kingdom way of doing everything. So you don't teach people, come to church, pray in tongues, but go to your, your workplace and they just say, ah, they are sharing something. There's one five five hundred thousand that does not have a reason why they are sharing it. And they say, this is my pocket, just put my own fast. This is Babylon. Whether you, if, if nobody told you, I am telling you that is Babylon. So it uses different things. Mammon, it uses lust, it uses different skills. But it's still the same thing. Watch this. In our time, in our time right now, the name given to that devilish system, there is a name. The name is subtly, there's no time I would have, I planned playing a documentary, but we we'll, would we'll sleep here all night. If God grants us grace, maybe next week. There is the name given to the evolution of Babylon. It's called the New World Order, right? In the time of the kings, right from the last one or two centuries ago, it was called the Illuminati. That fraternity of darkness. Right? I know many of you have heard about it and just laughed. Look up. Let me shock you. Let me tell you a few things that will surprise you. They have controlled the media. Walt Disney belongs to them. CNN belongs to them. They control the information you hear. They control the movie you watch. It's a system. Are you getting what I'm saying now? They control the stock exchange market, Wall Street. They control everything, the governmental systems. They define our scope of civilization. And yet believers are there praying in tongues in church. And we do not understand that we are the ecclesia. The name given to the system that would take the authority of Jesus and prove that darkness cannot prevail where there is light. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? Very important. Don't say it does not concern you. Don't say it does not concern you. When you are in class and somebody looks at you and is frustrated by your passion from God and all of a sudden you see three carryovers you know you did well. FFF, welcome, Babylon is at work. Are you getting what I'm telling you? When a lecturer looks at you and says, if you want to graduate, you know what to do. Go and wait for me at the back of my office. What is that? The Antichrist system masquerading itself. Now it's not even masquerading itself. It's coming out openly. A man looks at you and says, look at your employment letter. I tear it in your presence. You go back and say, Lord, I love you anyhow. God doesn't want that kind of prayer. It's good to love him anyhow, but the church must rise. He says, we are the city set on a hill. 
we will keep begging when we remain poor and broke we keep consoling ourselves that don't worry the day jesus will come he will wipe our tears he can wipe your tears now are you getting what i'm sure i'm sharing with you the system right now little children watch cartoons and see right all kinds of 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 things that should not be shown children are so addicted not just because they want to watch there is a com they have mastered the mind don't forget they are receiving assistance from the realm of the spirit so little children love seeing blood they love violence you see a little doll baby right if they want me to buy this cup now they will give this cup hips right this cup will have hips it will say use me and you see the man rush i want this one ten bring ten of this cup why because it is a system it has been fabricated it was so subtle we didn't know when it has evolved are you getting what i'm saying right now seduction the seduction that's why it gives it the language of a fornicator the same way a fornicator lures you into an unholy union that's what babylon is doing right now they determine everything everything they create the trends they do everything that happens they control our speakings our language right they tell you what to say they tell you what slang to say they tell you what film to watch they define what is civilization for you if you do not assume a particular mode you are not civilized and it mounts pressure on you and forces you to bend one time, I, I, I think, um, I don't know where they took me to and it was time to eat and they brought all kinds of things. I told them, I said, the work that I do, if I use this utensils to eat, I won't be satisfied. Get me a spoon. I don't have time for, for nonsense. You bring all kinds of things. I, the Bible says, he who does not walk should not eat. That means he who walks. You watch people in the restaurant sweating pouring rice on themselves because they must use fork right cutting themselves up with knife i must do it My, i'm not saying you shouldn't be civilized that's not what i'm saying but I'm, I'm saying you see a system has brought you under pressure right i saw one guy bab is here and bab dollars and i said this guy is broke he's poor now i'm not i'm not i'm not a religious person trust me but i'm saying it is the pressure he probably watched the actor of a film or a musician with dollars or something on his head and i must become like that the pressure of babylon are you getting what i'm saying there were times when our secondary school had decent teachers you dress you talking you look nice now you go and see the people teaching the guy enters as if he came to pick papers how are you students you see that and 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 the, and the students watch that this is the model this is the mentor that they have to become if we do not become apostolic and prophetic in our approach there will be casualty in the decades that are coming are you hearing what i'm saying it is this kind of agenda that should govern things like politics People ask me questions, I say, I, I don't like PDP, I don't like APC, I don't like anyone. All I know is whatever promotes God's agenda, I'm there. It's as simple as that. And we'll force the agenda of God to happen in this nation. For sure. For sure. The church is alive. Don't you think the church is dead? Ask Ebola. The church is very alive. Very, very alive. We sent it back to hell where it came from hallelujah there may be imperfections but the church is marching let me tell you jesus is found where the church is no matter what happens the church in nigeria is alive we are the firstborn of god who will present to the nations true apostolic and prophetic christianity before christ returns yeah that rejected stone that why do you think boko haram and the rest it's not just about politics they are being led by an influence they do not know but the church will stamp them out next week i'll be showing you what we can do 
because they've made the church look powerless that if you don't have it's not just about finance there is an anointing jesus christ took his power and gave that system are you getting what i'm saying he didn't just call one person and say you i give you if you like this guy I give him no he took his power the power that will crumble babylon and said my ecclesia take it i've given it to you but we do not know the scope of our use of that power is healing of cancers and this right we do not know that we have the authority to take charge of territories and compel it to come to the alignment of the christ let me tell you something this will come when things will happen in this nation you will be surprised you will wait and see tongue-talking christian bankers we will sack anybody who does not love god without apology look 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 watch this the members will be in our churches so we are the ones who will teach them and this big mouth it won't keep quiet my goodness my goodness that time is coming it's coming that's what you are becoming the bible says now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear they don't know it god has shrouded us in a mystery when he's done with us we will prove to creation that jesus did not tell a lie a witness is one who claims that the claim of another is true if i if you steal our money and i saw you right and we're in court they will say stand hold your bible swear that nothing but the truth the moment you think they say did you see it i say i saw it they say prove it i say this is the picture so the church is here to demonstrate that although we were not there at the cross there is a spirit that was there and he's in us and in partnership with that spirit we will prove that he's the king of kings and the lord of lords no longer allowing babylon to kill our children huh I wanted to cane one small boy one day. I just saw him. He just looked at one small girl who was running to go and kiss. I wanted to call him, use two fingers, and just whip him and say, Who taught you? <laughs> Probably watch somebody do it. House help, relatives in the parlor, all kinds of, 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 of TV. Right? Look church i want you to wake up that's why we call this series the emergence there is an emergence the bible says obadiah 1 verse 21 it says saviors that's what he called them saviors shall arise brothers and sisters hear me romans 8 verse 18 for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared there are people there are people sitting right here that death will not carry them it's not the issue of I shall not die. You can't die. The assignment compels God's integrity upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? No, no, no. Please believe what I'm telling you. There is a reason why you should not die. If you think it's just to keep being a liability to creation, you are in trouble. There is a way you become so relevant to the agenda of the king. And God gave us a sign. He said when you begin to see darkness upon the earth start rejoicing it's time to arise are you not seeing what is happening in the earth the meltdown they've not seen anything a heavy melt because the selfishness of man will never allow him carry out satan's agenda somebody will betray somebody they don't have love they cannot love because love is shared abroad by the holy ghost love is not affection love is shared abroad that character that can make you almost die to protect another they don't have it that's what happened to Boko Haram they started killing everybody all and sundry when those who sponsored them started denying they say oh you are denying us let's everybody you are our enemy hallelujah listen to me brothers and sisters nations will crumble it has only started you, the pride of kings will be humbled their equation is being interrupted by a hand they cannot see like belshazzar the handwriting on the wall when it writes upon your government is over you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting many kings have they've they've, they've spoken like the beast their blasphemy has risen to heaven 
Like the man who made the Titanic and vowed that even God cannot sing the Titanic and stood in awe when the Titanic sank. Only a fool will say in his heart, there is no God. There are people who have vowed and say, if you're, before your family will rise, me, I am the custodian of the oracles of this village. Watch God bring them down. We are here to stamp out nonsense. Listen, Jesus said, all hail. He said, all authority. The word is exousia. The capacity to stand in my office. All authority to unlock the heavens and the earth has been given to me. I give it to you. Please believe it. I give it to you. This is the mindset I carry when I pray for the sick. I know that their, I take their sickness personal. Because this is about the kingdom of our father and what the devil is doing. It's not about what their village is doing. Kill yourselves there in your village. No. Hallelujah. So Satan has structured it well. He has marketed the gospel of prosperity subtly to the church. So that we remain poor and broke because the borrower is always slave to the lender. Right? He has marketed all kinds of things. So the attack is coming everywhere spiritually notice brothers and sisters that our our forefathers and grandfathers gave birth to 13 children no cs huh what they used to cut the placenta of the baby we don't even know whether it's hot coal whether whatever they just cut that 13 times and nothing happened but here a woman comes because of her allegiance to god something happens they now start saying there's a fibro that devil is a liar there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Habalaba shit up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain, break every chain. Sing it one more time. There's an army rising up. They're rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. So the goal of the Antichrist system is total allegiance to Satan as the source and the sustainer of all things. Full stop. That's the one goal of the Antichrist system. To compel humanity to total allegiance to Satan as the source and the sustainer. By depending on your boss for your daily bread, you are partnering with that. There is an economic system of the kingdom that is bigger than your boss. But if you do not know and you have been taught that it's salary that will fund your assignment, you become a slave to that boss. Then he sleeps with you when he wants to sleep with you. Then he sacks you when he wants to sack you. But there is an army of apostolic billionaires, not just careless money mongers. The secrets of the kingdom shown. We are paying the price now and the world is laughing. Like the ark of Noah, the spirit of Elijah is bringing us to that reality. You've not seen prosperity yet, brothers and sisters. Wait until the army rises. Men whose wealth will be as equal as that of continents. They will walk like gods upon the earth. Why should you beg for, give me $35 to air a program? How much is it when a prostitute sleeps with a billionaire and becomes a millionaire the next day? All these things are the speakings of the beast unto God. They rise as a, a filthy incense to the heavens. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that's what is happening. Look at the graduates in Nigeria. One, one out of every ten graduates get a decent job in the first two years of graduation. 
That's the plan. Babylon at work. Babylon at work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yet, when you teach the church economic empowerment, they mock you. They say you are being carnal. Right? We do not know that the civilization of today moves upon the strength of economic empowerment. The person who has the resources dictate the rules. We are sick and tired of them doing every kind of thing. We will make our own programs. We don't have dull people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many of you in your sleep. You see these things in dreams. You know that there is something about your life. It's beyond ABU. It's beyond Zaria. Some of you, God took you wherever and brought you here. God gave you admission with one taxi. It's not about jam. It's about an agenda. Hallelujah. I see this thing every day. As the nations crumble, I see it as a signal. God is saying, son, stand up. Stand up. Church, rise up. I call my bride, the firstborn of God, to arise. But the reason is because we have refused to pay attention to the things that empower us. Hallelujah. The, the chairman board of trustee of this ministry was, he was decorated a general last year. I said, that's right. Anybody that disturbs us will tell him. He's part of kingdom advancement. Gathered men of influence and shut the gates of darkness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The kingdom will promote the ideology of God through one word. It's called influence. 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 That's why we'll keep contending for greater anointing and greater grace. The devil has spoke blasphemy too much. Are you getting what I'm saying? The church has been mocked. They act Nigerian films and they act man of God -da 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 -da, on a demon and then the, he, he releases power in the name of Jesus and the demon holds the anointing and throws it on the ground. Come on now. Which one is that one? There are all kinds of anointings. Which one? Which one did he hold and throw on the ground? There is the one you get as talisman. There is authentic apostolic power that Jesus, which one did the Havalis take and throw on the ground? See, we don't understand. These things bring money. But it is the, the generation of man bowing to Satan and receiving money. Let me tell you, if you are poor, let me just announce to you that your poverty is partnering with Babylon. Listen to me. It's a serious issue. It's not the issue of car. No! You don't, you don't need to be a Christian to have car. Men who will shut the gates of darkness sack lecturers that trouble our ladies employ the ones that call upon the name of the Lord next week I will show you the strategy I'm not just making noise I was trained in the wilderness of the spirit I'm not a, I'm not a stupid person just making noise there is a strategy Lord you were higher than any other We will declare to the nations, our God. Sing one more time. Say, Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Hallelujah. We just returned from a conference in Kaduna. And while I was ministering yesterday, they just brought one mama. You can see the way the devil had oppressed this woman. They were dragging her to bring her out. The son was almost crying. And I said, hold on, we've not started ministering. They were desperate. Why? Most probably because they've gone to a lot of churches with men of God making noise. Jesus can do this. He is this. I know he can do this. Put your faith to work. The manifestation of the glory of God is a visible revelation of the power of God here and now. Here and now. 
the woman stood there i was talking and i was just watching i said mama what is wrong and they said for five months they've taken this woman to the hospital they said arthritis she cannot walk i, I said that devil is a liar all of a sudden the lord opened my eyes and i saw this innocent woman tied eyes from my head to her toe i saw snakes for this purpose was the son of god made manifest for this purpose for this purpose for that joblessness the every time you see a challenge say for this purpose for this purpose they said you will not graduate for this purpose they said no job will come for this purpose for this purpose for this purpose, for this purpose. everybody in your family is an idol worshiper but for this purpose you came god has taken you as an envoy to crumble babylon to crumble babylon it will happen forget about the pain of today hear me forget about the disappointment i see men and women who will get married age two your child is praying in tongues age two a little boy while you pray in tongues he's praying no 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 listen we won't be fighting and beating our wives it's over we, by now we know it's a spirit and we have authority against it men are not that bad women are not that evil babylon masquerading itself gone are those days i tell you all things are past god is doing something new in our time god is working something powerful in this day God is building a mighty army in our days and he won't stop he won't stop till we look just like him he won't stop hey, he won't stop till the church looks like him he won't stop he won't stop till we look just like him God is raising mighty men in these days. God is building a mighty army in these days. He won't stop, he won't stop till the church looks like him. He won't stop, hey, he won't stop till the church looks like him. Listen. Next week I will show you the strategy on how this will happen don't you ever think you are little to make this thing happen once God can find a man and find a people he will do mighty things he told Jeremiah don't say I am young don't say I am a child I will put my my words in your mouth you will subdue you will tear down and you will rebuild hallelujah tonight i came to challenge you babylon is falling what you are seeing in the tv is falling the old wine has finished are you hearing what i'm saying the church is rising watch this nigeria i told you i've shared with you already the prophetic agenda of god but nigeria as a continent this platform is not the platform i will share some things with you that god has revealed to me there are some things that if they don't happen this year the hand of Satan has been broken in Nigeria forever till Christ comes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a reason why you see darkness looming. It is beyond humans. It's an agenda. It's the attacking of the firstborn of God. But God is always one step ahead. When you see the church pray and we speak, don't let the devil fool you that nothing is happening. There is much that is being done in the kingdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When the dust settles, you will see a victorious church. He said, I will build. I will supervise that this church stands. I will build my church. But the goal is to have as many people come into this alignment. Look at me. One man cannot do this alone. One church, one ministry cannot do this. It takes a people who will say, Lord, we understand. 
Lord, we have pledged our allegiance first and foremost. There are many of us here. Your stand with God is not straight. We don't even know where you stand. As occasion serves. When in Rome, behave like any other place that is not Zion is of the devil. It's as simple as that. For you to be part of this army, your allegiance must not be confused. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? The gates will ask you. My brother, it's not all about business. They will trap you in that oil company. Where do you stand? You must answer the question. Where do you stand? Where do you stand? When you declare where you stand, and then you have committed whatever government you pledge allegiance to. As for me, I've made a decision. Thank God I'm going to be a father. From the womb. You know how John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Many men are not responsible. If you're a father here, God is speaking to you take charge. There are many homes you pray when there's trouble. If they don't pay the man three months salary, I say, okay, children, let's come together and pray. Say, let's pray because what God, the attack coming to this family. And you don't take your place. Right? Watch this. Forget about the flamboyancy you see on TV. Babylon is falling. It's a prophecy. Babylon is falling. And your assignment right now at this level is to be an envoy of the kingdom. Go to your territory. Do you know how Satan is ravaging our homes? There are people in our homes with terminal diseases. You are watching them. Take that authority and that anointing. If nobody has told you you are anointed, I'm telling you this night, you are anointed. Do you know how things went bad in my family? I heard, about, I heard about the things that surrounded my bed. And I said, Satan, you will pay for it. Ah! You will pay for it. Are you still afraid of the devil? Or should he begin to be afraid of you? I told you it's an old story. Satan is not the opposite of God. There was a day he was not existing. Satan has an exact creation date. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The strength of evil is deception. When you know where you stand and you understand what it takes to enforce that victory, he will stay clear of your life. Some of you get up in the morning, all kinds of pain, just say, Kai, it's pain. Ah, is this not how my mother felt the other day? Is that what you should... Look, I told you, take this word whatever goes wrong in your life say for this purpose for this purpose was the son of God made manifest that he may what? destroy 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 the church is the representation of the victory of Christ the church is the representation of the fulfillment of prophecy the church is the hallmark the symbol of the wisdom of God. And we cannot fail. There is a generation that must not fail. We are going to pray. Look, you must, you must tell God, I am available. I am available. Some of you, God is calling you from your slumber. Your spiritual slumber. Ladies, God is calling you. Forget about that allergy and concentrate on God. Allergy gives you one million, you insulted God. God wants to make you a nation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Quit all of these carnal things and stay with God and watch him bless you. Don't ever let any man fool you. You know, gone are the days where when you say you are going into ministry, people just look at you and say, Hey! You mean it? As if this kind, or you say, I'm going to marry a man of God. They say, talk. His grace is of it. Why are you going to talk like that? You marry a busy businessman and you are happy. I'm X, Y, Z. You know, they have, it's part of this antichrist system because the, the, the revelation they are trying to say is you are marrying a poor, broke man, right? 
your job is just to be suffering they, they imagine four legs of, of firewood trying to cook food for church members. Must you think like that? Who taught you that? The kingdom of God is a prosperous kingdom. Let no man fool you. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's our year of the rain. The kingdom of God is a prosperous kingdom. He wants to give you the anointing and the influence it will take to legislate. But he first wants you to understand this system. Anytime you bow to anything or any principle that is not of God, realize that you are communicating your fraternity with Babylon. That becomes the basis. Your love for God and your passion to see his kingdom come becomes the constraint upon your life to run away from evil. Not the fear of Satan. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not going to come and try to sleep with a lady now. Why? Not just because I'm afraid of Satan, but because I realize the significance of standing in my position to declare my love for God and my passion, my contribution to see his kingdom come. And that love constrains me. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why I preach. I came back, I came back to this town 12, 12 midnight on the dot. It was as if I was not seeing where my bed was. But I say, no problem, I must prepare. There are lives that we must sharpen because there is an agenda of God. And then one, one demon somewhere will go to call your name. I pity the devil that calls my name in any covenant. Number one is that the fire that will come out from whatever they are invoking, that's not all. Two, the harpalist will die as a lesson that not everybody is touchable. My goodness, no matter how a madman is, he will not enter fire by mistake. There are, there, are, there, are, there are mad men and there are mad men. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Invoke nonsense. There are many times I'm about to travel. Somebody send a text. He says, it's so accident. I say, me. Hey. It's not, I'm not just bragging. I'm standing on a rock. Let this mind be in you. You have watched films where a boss will say, I will come and kill you and he will kill everybody helplessly. You have carried that mindset to work with God. The believer is supernatural in every way. I want you to understand this. Brothers and sisters, I've prayed for people with contagious diseases. If I'm lying by now, you would have known. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's easy to stand and speak. But what happens when you hug and talk to somebody with tuberculosis? Or somebody with a, a communicable disease. I've been doing this for years. My body is as healthy as a baby's body. Healthy as a baby's body. There is the reality of another life. That when it's at work in you, it will turn you into a superhuman. Hallelujah. Rise up, we are going to pray. I want us to insist on some things in the spirit. Please take this prayer session seriously. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. I'd like you to lift your voice and cry and say, Lord, I declare, I pledge my eternity allegiance to you from today there's no going back there's no bending lift your voice and pray you are the lord of my life there's no confusion about it what shall separate us from the love of god in the secret and in the open i love you i belong to your government there's no confusion about it. I belong to your government. There's no confusion about it. Pray. I compel my life to come under the influence of your government. I compel my life to come under the influence of your government. My thought comes under the influence of your government. 
my words under the influence of your government pray Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me. Look up. Let me speak to you. Whether you are coming from Plateau State or Kogi State or wherever, you are going to be you declare, I've been called out of every tribe. Hear me? Every tongue. Listen. Don't let yourself to be a victim of where you have come. You did choose it. Don't let anybody speak nonsense and say you came from Kogi State. You came from this as though there is a cause upon your life and there is no way out. Prophesy with violence in your spirit. I've been called out of every tribe, every tongue. I challenge every power that is not of God. Oh, I'm anointed. I carry the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost as an envoy of power, as an envoy of the kingdom, as an ambassador, as a representative called out of every cause called out of every covenant called out of every ordinance pray he make his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire i have no business with the ordinances of the fathers with the ordinances of witchcraft i willingly i choose this day that I serve the king. I choose this day that my allegiance is to Christ of him. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. You are creating a reaction in the realm of the spirit. Silent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Look at me. There are many of you, humanly speaking, you are seeing patterns in your family and around your life you know should not be. It's true that you have been saying you are in Christ, but the truth is that as it is right now, there are things you are seeing in your life that are speaking blasphemy to the Lord. You are going to pray. You know what it is. You are challenging Babylon first in your life and in your family. Call it by his name and curse it by the God of heaven. Lift your voice and pray. Break those patterns. Come on. Now. Break those patterns. That pattern of childlessness. I break it, I curse it by the God of heaven. That pattern of failure, that pattern of lust, that pattern of addiction, that pattern of masturbation, that pattern of immorality. I curse you by the God of heaven. I curse you by the name that is above every pray way out pray your way out pray your way out way out shake it take it take it take it take it take it most a protocol to break it in a break it in a get it got a lot of time i break the patterns i of jesus i challenge the forces of darkness pray i travel by the spirit in the name of jesus the sun shines for my family the sun shines for me i cannot go down no way there is a spirit of god upon me 
Call it by name. Call it by name. Call it by name. If thou shalt say to this mountain, if thou shalt say to this mountain, if thou shalt say, if thou shalt say, if thou shalt say, ma protosko pekete, e prekete teke lekete. Command victory, establish victory in pain, establish victory in the name of Jesus. Break down the walls of witchcraft, break down the walls of evil. Break down the walls of limitation. You are an ambassador. You carry a big. He's an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with me. Stump power and mind. Sing it from your heart. It's a song of victory. Our God, He's an awesome God, God He reigns from heaven above with me. I tell you, you will come out a champion. No power will keep you. What an awesome yourselves into two you're going to release prophecies upon that person listen 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 the bible says where the word of a king is there is power where the word of a king is there is power hallelujah i like you to pray as if you are praying for your own brother as if you're praying for your sister prophesy Open the fountains of blessings. Open the fountains of grace. Come on now. Koinonia, pray. I call you blessed. I strengthen you. It's your season of the rain. The glory of the Lord is upon you. The favor of the Lord is upon you. Prophesy from the depth of your heart. Call it forth. Even God who quickened the dead and calls for the things that be not as though they were. Prophesy. I call for that they don't like. I of like passion. I call it forth. I call it forth upon the dimension of wealth and abundance. Supernatural jobs. Open doors. New levels of revelation. New levels of Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we pray, we shift things in the heavens. When we pray, we, we grant the angels access to enforce the counsel of the, of the Lord. Listen. We are going to pray. The election is by the corner. We are going to pray. The Bible says pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Zaria is our Jerusalem. We are going to speak to the borders of this city. We stay the hands of evil. The hands of bloodshed. You will not cross the circumference of this city. We hold the keys of this city. And we drive out every devil. Come on pray. It's your Jerusalem. Scatter back at 
There will be peace upon our walls, peace upon our borders. Shalom Zaria. Shalom Zaria. We pray upon the borders of this city, the north to the south. We command peace. Shalom. Shalom. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. We drive out every power. We drive out every force. We take charge of the heavenlies. We take charge. No death. No bomb blast. No bloodshed. In the name of Jesus. The church is praying. The church is praying. The government of God. The institution that carries his authority is praying. We speak hallelujah now we are going to pray i feel sorry for those who say nigeria will divide they don't know the mystery of our creation go and read isaiah 18 when you see the representation of nigeria in isaiah 18 you know that no human entity has what it takes to break this nation are you ready to pray you're going to pray to every border first secure your family I'm not hearing bad news. This is not, no, 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 no. Refuse it and pray. Spread the peace of the spirit across the length and breadth of this nation. Go ahead and pray. We legislate as ambassadors of the kingdom. We command it in the name of Jesus. In Abuja, in Kaduna, in Jos, in Makodi, in Kogi State. Potakot, we command, let there be peace. Let there be peace. Let there be peace in our nation. Even in the forthcoming election, let there be peace. Let there be peace. By the mercy of God. By the mercy of God. Remember your firstborn, O God. Remember she that you died for. Remember your firstborn, oh God. For God and for God. We pray and we invoke the mercy of God upon our families. Frustrate the token of liars. Turn their wisdom backward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to know that you're establishing things in the spirit. This is how kings reign. The Bible says, let it be done in the earth. In other words, compel compliance. Points you didn't pray for, you will see God answering it. That's the realm where the Bible says, as they are still thinking, while it's still in the realm of imagination. When they threw a man who was in a healthy relationship with God. You know, that's what, that was the bill that was passed by the Senate in Babylon. To make sure Daniel cuts away his relationship with God. And Daniel said, no, I can do any other thing but not this. When they threw him in the den, the king could not sleep. See, the same way if you touch a man's wife, even if it's by mistake, you can insult her from a distance, that's alright. But you get physical. The husband changes. The Bible says jealousy is the rage of a man. You want to see an angry man do something to his wife or somebody he loves. His sister or somebody. 
That's what happens. Love alone will give you a level of immunity above the immunity of an earthly ambassador. Believe me when I tell you this. The prophet knew this and that was why when they came to capture him, he said, they that are with us, for us, are greater. There is an immunity that you can have. I pray that God will bring us to that place of fellowship. There is that place where sickness cannot come near you. There is that place where no oppression of darkness. Please believe me. You will not spend your time binding and casting. You will spend your time interacting. There is an immunity that comes from that place. And your life becomes an unending wonder. A subject of discussion with no end. Because there is a mystery that surrounds it. The mystery is him. The mystery is him. When, when Shade was collecting the tithes and offering, and she said, um, she was giving an example of a woman, and she wanted to look for somebody. I was hoping she wouldn't call my name. You clean my feet, you don't get anything. Believe me, there's, there's, there's nothing on my, you only clean a dirty um, feet. But if you can clean his feet, change your life relationship hallelujah number two please pay attention the second thing the lord put in my heart to share with us is that life is a code life is a code life is a code c o D E. Thank you. Life is a code. There was so much noise. I don't know where that was coming from. Life is a code. And it takes revelation to unlock the codes and the mysteries of life. Brothers and sisters, as haphazard as life looks, there is a spiritual rhythm that is responsible for manifestation of results please hear me i call them mysteries the mysteries of the kingdom life is a code it takes knowledge and understanding to unravel it nothing just happens you don't just grow you don't just experience favor you don't just prosper you don't just fall sick you don't just stay healthy you don't just live long and you don't just die life is governed by laws please listen life is governed by mysteries bishop oyedeko calls them kingdom secrets the bible says let, let's look at a few scriptures while I was meditating on this, I'm telling you, it, it blew my mind. Media, you help us. Give us Job 29, verse 4. Job 29, verse 4. Then we'll go to chapter 1, verse 3. Job 29, verse 4, and then chapter 1, verse 3. Hear what Job said. The richest man in the east. He says, as I was in the days of my youth. When what? when the secrets of god was upon my tabernacle he was giving us the explanation this was a defense a justification for his being the greatest man in influence and he said let me tell you it's not because my name is joe there was a mystery he said i started doing business with god right from my youth he says when the secrets of god everybody say the secrets of god the secrets of God were upon my tabernacle. What did that produce in his life? Chapter 1 verse 3. Same Job. The Bible says his substance. This was a man who had access to divine secrets. The mysteries of the kingdom. Listen. It says his substance was also 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels and 500 yoke of oxen 
and 500 she asses and a very great household it says so that this man was what the greatest of all men in the east and he tells us the secret he said don't just envy my influence what you see life is a mirror if you try to change your physical environment it's as foolish as looking at the mirror and trying to chuck your hand through it to alter it life only reflects something happening in the spirit the greatest man in the east gives us the secret and he says the secret of the lord i traded secrets divine secrets there was an exchange between the holy spirit and me daniel chapter 2 let's see what daniel says Daniel chapter 2 verse 19 and then 46. Daniel chapter 2 verse 19. Is God blessing you already? Life is not haphazard. Daniel chapter 2 verse 19. Listen, this was when the king had a dream. And he was angry because all his wise men and lieutenants could not interpret it. And he said, look, we are going to kill everybody. And then Daniel said, no, let the king not be hasty in this. Give us time. And Daniel knew the power of his secret place. And the Bible says, then, ay, 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 ay. then the secret was what? Revealed. Brothers and sisters, when a particular kingdom secret is revealed, you hold the keys and you will do wonders with it. There's no, there's, there's no way, no way, you can claim you are holding on to a key in the kingdom. And with time, there is no evidence now. It says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. And then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. 46. 46. It says, listen, my goodness. A man holds a secret of the kingdom and begins to shock the entire Babylonian empire to a point that this happened then the king Nebuchadnezzar did what? he fell upon his face and worshipped who? God secrets make a man like a god upon the earth a king removes his crown and says what is this? Daniel he says he worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer oblation and sweet orders to him. Look at verse 28 of the same verse. 28. Hear what Daniel said. Please, let's read together. He was now giving us the key. One to read. But there is a God in heaven that does what? And makes known to the king what shall be in the latter days. Brothers and sisters, the God we serve is a God that reveals secrets. He can call you and say, come, let me show you a secret. Secret. Do you know them? Do you know the mystery? What you see in this ministry by the grace of God, this little that God is doing, is a product of mysteries don't you ever think it's a mistake it can be reproduced anywhere any day anytime because it's a secret it says there is a god in heaven everybody say there is a god in heaven that will reveal secrets for me today yeah. there is a secret when you handle the story of your family will change tonight just one secret please believe me there is a secret God can show you by prophecy tonight and tell you, look, look, this confusion, you are, you are amiss. This is what is wrong. This is the correction. There is a secret. That delay has a mystery that sustains it. Are we together? That bad luck has a mystery that sustains it. Don't just say people don't like me. Don't you know there is something that makes them not to like you? The same way somebody can turn and look at Benga and say, Benga, God, 
just led me i don't know why but take hundred thousand no nobody just acts anyhow they think they are acting out of compassion but there is an influence in the spirit there is a god in heaven that reveals secrets psalm 25 verse 14 psalm 25 verse 14 I must burn this revelation in our hearts. I want us to really have it. Psalm 25 verse 14. It says, the secret of the Lord is with who? Them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. The secret of the Lord is not with believers. It's not with churchgoers, not pastors, not apostles, not prophets. Those who revere him, those who respect him, he will call you and say, come, let me show you something. Let me show you what makes ministry work. Let me show you something that can take your life. Let me show you something that can bring you promotion in your office. There is something. The Bible says the labor of the fool wearied every one of them. Because he does not know the road to the city. Not because there is no road. He does not know. And part of the blessings of the apostolic ministry and the prophetic ministry is access to the mysteries of a dispensation. Ephesians chapter 3, please. Give us chapter, verse 1 to 3. Ephesians chapter 3. This is an apostolic ministry. This is a prophetic ministry. You must understand the spiritual implication. This is what Paul is saying. Listen. He says, for this cause... Do you know that the mysteries of the kingdom have not, um, it's not yet, it's not exhausted. The revelation, what we know in church today is not all there is. God is still opening more doors. And it takes the apostolic ministry to be able to receive and communicate these dispensational secrets. Current mysteries. 3 verse 1. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Verse 2. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word. Verse 3. Read please. 1 to read. How that by revelation he made known unto me what? The mystery. He made known unto me. He showed me by revelation. As I wrote afore in few words. Verse 4. Whereby, listen. When ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Next verse. Shocking. Listen. Which in other ages ah, yeah, 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 was not made known to the sons of men. Stop. Listen. There are mysteries that have been uncovered in, in today's world. That have not yet been people did not access it before not that it was not there but that mystery was not meant for that dispensation and the bible says which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto who his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit it didn't say reveal to believers Please listen. This is not human worship. It didn't say reveal to believers. The current present truth. The operation of the Holy Spirit. Administratively is communicated in the body. By the ministry of the apostolic and the prophetic. So there are mysteries. That God is helping us. One of the things I pray that will come upon us tonight is a mantle of revelation. Not just miracles, but that you hold on to something. The moment you enter your office, you know what to do to silence wicked men. The moment you step in, you know what to do to move to the next dimension. The Bible says for Jesus himself knew what to do. Scripture says it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Can we pray in one minute and say, Lord, 
there is something I need to know to rise to the next level. Please show me. Pray. There is something I need to know. My God, I pray that you show me. Why does everybody hate me? Could it be that there is a mystery that I need to know? The Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he makes even his enemies. Please pray. Lord, why am I just failing, failing in class? What is the mystery that will end my captivity? Why an endless circle of poverty? There is a key. Hand it to me tonight, oh God. Please hand it to me. Why do I just fall sick? Why is my church not growing? Why is my heart not dividing? There is a mystery. I humble myself tonight. Why is the anointing scarce in my life? Why have I not access influence in the spirit? Show me the mystery. Are you praying? Open my eyes. This is my year of multiplied grace and influence. It's my year. I place a demand. It's a right properly. Become truth. Right properly. Just said up in the day of my youth. When the secrets of the Lord secrets hear me coin we do business in this kingdom with secrets there are secrets we remain on the strength of mysteries pray is part of the meeting you're opening up your spirit Lord, I'm tired of cycles of failure. What's my family? There is a mystery that really brings deliverance. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible says they are life to those who find them. And only those who seek find. They are light to those who find them and health to their flesh. Number three. The third thing the Lord asked me to share with us tonight, very powerful, is found in John chapter 5. Please give us John chapter 5. We'll read verse 1 to 9. The Lord wants to reveal a dimension of himself tonight as the helper. Listen. Listen. The Bible calls God a Beniza. You know what that means? The helper of men. When God comes in to help you in life, you must succeed. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. We're reading down to verse 9. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, Bethesda having five porches. Right? Verse 3. In this lay a great multitude of... Look at the kind of people there. Successful people don't have any business with that environment. It's an environment that connoted weakness. It says, impotent folk of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Please pay attention. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And then whosoever, excuse me, whosoever then um, first 
Then first, after troubling the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatever disease he had. Can you imagine that kind of frustration? One person per year. Just like Nigeria says, you should wait until somebody retires or dies. Then they say there's vacancy. You now come. One person per year was a horrifying situation. Then the Bible says there was a certain man. No name. There was a certain man. Which had an infirmity for how long? 38 years. After 38 years, anything you cannot do is a concern. Do you agree with me? After 38 years, anything you cannot do is a concern. At 38 years, no child is a concern. At 38 years, you cannot at least move into your house is a concern. At 38 years, there's nothing meaningful you are doing is a concern. The Bible says this man had been there 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie, now listen, God is about to speak to you. And knew that he had been there for how long? For a... The first revelation is that he knows you have been in that situation for a long time. He knows. And then the Bible says, he said unto him, will thou be made whole? Verse 7. This is what many of us are saying tonight. The impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man. I have no helper. I would have gotten the job, but I have no helper. I would have stepped into another level in ministry, but I have no helper. He says, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool. And tonight, God wants to be a helper. He walked to him. And the man said, I have no helper. But he said, I will help you. You don't need the pool. Rise up. He can use another route. The formula had always been fall inside the water. But he said, let's ignore the water. I am here. Rise up. The formula has been be blessed after 20 years but God is saying I can follow another route with you such that in one year I can do something in your life that will surprise you he said I have no man and the Lord said reveal to my people I will manifest as a helper when God helps a man you will be surprised the Bible says Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped marvelously helped part of the ministries of the holy spirit is as a helper he comes in to help you that's what grace is all about that where your effort stops and you say lord if it's based on my qualification oh i read whatever it is and god says i am here i can take you to another level Oh God, I'm here. I've been barren. They said I don't even have a womb. And he says, I am here to help you. Who is God speaking to tonight? You really need help. Only an arrogant person will deny the need for help. I have been helped by people in my life. And I saw how easy my life became when they helped me. Are we together now? Watch this. Benga, come. I'm trying to lift this. And my hand is i can't lift it and then a helper comes and sometimes he can even volunteer to carry everything and he makes my life easy the help of god can make a man's life easy please let me preach to you for one minute i have a responsibility over this house to tell you this and i must say it disabuse your mind from this satanic proposal coming from the media that Nigeria is in trouble. Economy. Everybody is shouting dollar. I'd like you to shout it. Count me out. Say it. Count shout it one more time. Count me out. Listen. We are not irresponsible citizens. Don't get me wrong. We sympathize with what is happening in the nation. But if you 
dare let Satan speak to you, he will destabilize your creativity and crumble your life. People who have been irresponsible since before dollar have found a shield to explain their irresponsibility. Everybody says dollar is rising. Is it not in your Bible? When men say, Are we together now? He says, you will say there is a lifting up. This is not the first time the economy of the world is going into trouble. The Bible says in the days of Joseph, it said money failed. Money failed. But there was a secret that was revealed to Joseph. There is what you hold on to that this year can be the most prosperous year in your life. Listen. God is looking for every opportunity to make a statement. Afford him your life. A Christian is not one who has just received Jesus into his life. A Christian, listen, is one who operates by the principles of the word of God. Our economy is different. And by economy, I don't just mean finances. Your health, whatever. There's Lassa fever. There's what again? Huh? There's Zika virus. There's which one again? They are, they are there. He's the one you know you are mentioning. What of the ones that are arrows that fly by day? Have they told you on TV? The Bible. Listen, listen. Psalm 90. Don't turn there. Our time is gone. Psalm 91 said, Thou shalt not be afraid. Of the arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence. Right? There are diseases. You breathe them all around. It takes a superior revelation. To keep you. I reject everything. Whose price has been paid on the cross. I will not pay another price again. Are we together? You must understand the implication of your oneness with Christ. So he wants to be your helper. Can you hand over your life and say, God help me. Truly I've tried by myself. If you don't help me, I will never get this admission. If you don't help me, I will never graduate. If you don't help me, my certificate will remain a piece of paper. I will keep mocking myself with my accolades. Listen, if no one has told you, let me tell you again, our world is a cruel and a wicked world. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to trouble anyone. You just need to be alive. That's the condition to be a potential victim. When the Lord told me this, I said, Lord, I first, I receive for myself. I receive for myself. He is my helper. When God comes in to help you, he can round off what has taken you 10 years, 10 years of captivity. Let me tell you something. It doesn't take time when Jesus is there. It doesn't take time. You will be watching the growth. This is how it will live. And you are saying, where is it? It's gone. Who is like him, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne? What is Father, and the ocean roll, to the Lord of all. You know why I raised that song? If you think there are many gods, I know that we claim we are not idols, but I will show you now that many of us have been practicing idolatry. You know why many people never believe God? We still have options. Your uncle still said, okay, let's just see what happens at the end of the month. So while you are saying, Lord, I trust you, what you mean is, Lord, I trust you through my uncle. Are we together now? Lord, I trust you through that that CEO, I met him and he said uh, he will consider my promotion. Lord, I trust you through my job. 
God says he will bless you and he says, I know my salary is on his way coming. Lord, I trust you. And you say, I know. I, there's, there's that consultant surgeon. He's coming in next week from India. And God is just arranging it such that he's coinciding with my need. Who is like him? The lion and the lamb. Seated on the throne. Mountains bow down. Every ocean rolls. To the Lord our Lord. Praise Adonai From the rising of the sun To the end of every day Praise Adonai All the nations of the earth All the elders and the saints Sing praise I believe God though I'm a man of faith I believe God he says, I know whom I have believed. I've seen God help people even in this place. In this place. Brothers and sisters, there is a mystery of lifting. God can take a man. You see somebody today and God can lift that person. He, he, they looked at Saul and said, when the, we can't see the process. When did Saul become a prophet? A man sleeps as a prisoner. But the next afternoon, he is already a prime minister. Oh, don't play with the God we serve. There is a mystery of the lifting of men. That you are about to die after one month. And after koinonia, you are not only alive, you are carrying the healing anointing. Who is this God that can bring speed to a man? I'm not motivating you. I know him there is a mighty God who can wipe the tears of people let me tell you this night before we pray just take away your mind from anything and everybody don't come to God with your calculation and say Lord my prayer request I wrote my uncle he must answer me leave that one let God choose if God wants to use a chair to give you a breakthrough let him give it to you You've not read that God used a bed to bring bread for a man. Do you think if Elijah had an option, he would choose a bed? Was it not rock that brought water out from people? These things were not done in the spirit. It's just that we truly do not believe God. We think we do, but we don't. There are people who are sick here right now, but may never believe that God can touch them. Listen. Don't be so into your challenges that you think tonight God cannot touch you. It's easy to say, okay, God, I'm happy. I, I thank you for what you are doing. No, you must insist. Hallelujah. Luke 18 verse 1, the Bible says, He spake this parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. He said there was an unjust judge. He didn't fear anybody, not God, nor man. And there was this poor widow who said, avenge me my adversary. And for a long time, the man would not respond. And she kept pestering him. When you place a demand with your faith, there is enough grace. There is enough anointing. You can argue this and watch other people stepping into their testimonies. But please tonight, wherever you are, inside and outside, don't make it look like you have come to waste your time tonight. Are we together? God has revealed to us that he's coming in as a helper. Bless you, my dear. As a helper. As a helper. This ministry has been helped by the Lord. Greatly helped by the Lord. I think it was last week I was sharing the testimony. We don't have the opportunity to share one-tenth. And by the way, I want to challenge you. When God blesses you, don't keep quiet. You return back to where you received the miracle and let the people of God know. That this is what God has done. I shared the testimony last week. I think it was last week or two weeks ago. When Kaduna after a meeting just to have lunch briefly and then rush back. And I'm there and then a woman walks up to order a meal too. And she's with a little son. Then I look at this woman and she was looking at me. She said, are you Pastor Joshua? I said, yes ma'am. And then she greeted me. 
And I said, sorry, do I know you? And she smiled. She said, I'll tell you a little story. She said, two years ago, she came for counseling. As wretched, it was like she had come to the end of her life. I share this to encourage you. Hallelujah. And um, she said everything was scattering. She was a single mom with a child. Supposedly no hope for marriage. Nothing was working. They were about to throw her out on her job. And I prophesied to her and I said they were going to call her back and send her to the marketing department. She should not be afraid. And she said, man of God, that's exactly what happened. And she looked at me. And she said, can you imagine what has happened to my life? She just put her hand like this and I saw a ring. And she said, I just got married two months ago. And then, she said, I should look outside. And there was a clean E-class. She said, who would believe that in two years I'll be the one owning this? My life has changed. Brothers and sisters, if you will believe, God can change your life. If you will argue, he will not argue with you. He will leave you to continue until you find enough reasons. Please, I want you to be angry today as we pray and place a demand on the throne of heaven and say, Lord, you must answer me. Whenever I call you, you will answer me. Elijah called on you and you answered him. Moses called on you and you answered him. That's why I know Wherever I call you, you will answer me. Seated here, inside and outside, in all of the overflows, there are people with medical reports that if God does not visit them this night, they are dying for sure. I bring you a message of hope. The helper is in the house. There are families here who are in situations that will take a vigil for them to explain because the, the situation is so scattered, it doesn't have beginning and end. They don't even know where the problem started from. They know that they are in the middle of a situation. But the helper, when he comes, he can make every crooked path straight. There are people here trusting God for children. There are people here trusting God for a turnaround, breakthrough. Do you believe that God is stepping in? The worship team sang so beautiful and they challenged us. Do you believe that God is able to step in? We are going to pray right now. You are not praying for your neighbor. You are not praying on your request. You are going to pray for yourself and say, Lord, please, don't let me go back the same way I came. Lift your voice and pray. Inside and outside, please pray. yes lord hallelujah 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 one more prayer point the power of god is so strong in this place i'd like you to say lord visit the foundation of my problem and set me free please lift your voice and pray what you think may be the problem may not really be the problem Hallelujah. We're going to sing this song just seven times. And then I'll begin to minister. My goodness. I tell you, God will do extraordinary things in this place. I will praise him from everlasting. 
everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting no, 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 no. to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to the voices. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Praise the miracle walker from who will step into your life. Everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to One more time. Lord, we will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. Madam, let me talk to you, please. Yes. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. It's time for you to rejoice. The Lord is asking me to destroy witchcraft from your life and your family. Because you love the Lord, but there is a lot of oppression in your life. Is that true? Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that he's ending captivity today from your life. Right now, I command that spirit out by the power of the Holy Spirit. I stretch my hand. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing something being removed from your head. That's what I see happening. You will never be the same again. I command it out. By the authority of the kingdom in the name of jesus christ and god is removing something from your stomach too i'm seeing something leaving your stomach like a growth i command it to go now right now right now i will praise him from everlasting everlasting hallelujah everlasting madam check yourself Give her the mic. Check yourself right now. Your stomach area. Check yourself. What is happening? Look at this. Because I saw that there was something. If I don't pray for you. Huh? There's a movement. There's a movement. Because I'm seeing something. Later they will tell you it's fibroid. Huh? You are, you are even afraid of going to the hospital. Yes. Because you think they will tell you it's fibroid. That's really what they would have told you. But today we cancel it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everlasting to everlasting. Gabriel, I'm hearing the name Gabriel. Gabriel, Gabriel. Please let's save time. Gabriel, you are at that row. You are at the back. That row at the back. You are a gentleman at the back. That row there. Where is the person? Please come out quickly. You are wearing something like brown, brown shirt or something. Is there someone like that? Who is that? Come. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. Lord, I will praise you from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. 
because I'm seeing another woman. Your mother is here. The Lord is saying I should speak to her. Light is living from you outside. There is a woman outside. She's your mother. Where is she? Is she here? Or at, not outside? At, at the, is he at the edge of the wall or outside? Some, who is that, please? Is she here? Come, mama. God is wiping the tears of your family tonight. Everlasting to everlasting. Lord, we will praise you. From everlasting. Everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you. From everlasting. Everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you. From everlasting. Everlasting to everlasting. We will praise you. From everlasting. Mama, you're welcome. Please stand up. This woman has suffered. I'm looking at this woman and I saw a load on your head that is reaching the roof and she's carrying it alone. Mama, can you hear me? Look at this woman crying. You see, some of you don't know why. God, this is not just showmanship. There are people here just seated close to you if they tell you their stories your own story will look like child's play because this woman has suffered mama you are a good woman but listen listen where where are you are you in zaria here in zaria what do you do i need to pray because i'm i'm seeing this is a cause i know I'm going to pray for you. Do you know why I call this boy? They want to kill him. That's why I want to pray for him. They caught. He might have they caught. This boy might have they caught. I go yesterday. Yesterday we go. They say on the tent. We will come back again. Eh? What court? He get problem. He might have they caught. If I don't pray for this boy, as small as he is, they are going to kill him. Do I know you have a case in the court? Why would we call somebody like don't don't be afraid, Mama? Because this thing will even cause you problem. Um, young man, I will pray for you. Mommy, look at me. This thing is a cause. Huh? The same way they killed your husband, they want to kill this boy and leave you in misery. Huh? Mama, I'm going to pray for you. There is a God that reveals secrets to men. Yeah. <laughs> Because I'm seeing a load right to the roof on your head. You are carrying it alone. I will pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is wiping your tears. I'm seeing a mother outside. The Lord is showing me a mother outside. A woman outside. Uh, it's like you are wearing her tie. But it's not like her tie, same material. A tie like a normal this thing this is a, it's an elderly woman outside sitting just by this side of the window please i need to speak to her if there is somebody like that let's have a mother outside the lord is showing me mama i'm going to pray for you in the name of jesus for god to change your story i don't know what is in the court but in the name of jesus we will change it how old are you you are 14 you will serve the Lord in the name of Jesus. You believe that? Where are you from, Mama? From Edo. You are from where? Old Edo, from Okwela. Where are you from? You are from Edo State. That's what the Lord is telling me because the same thing He's delivering two of you from. You see that? Mama, I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. God is destroying. That spirit father I lay my hands on our mommy the back pain look at me mama the back pain you it did, it did, it did. Oh. you will be healed now Amen. hold my hand look at what is happening to her mama shout Jesus loud Jesus. father hold my hands for your glory mama look at me look at me you see something like fire moving at your back right now that pain is living right now in the name of jesus do what you couldn't do check yourself
do what you couldn't do. Look at, look at, help her, cover her. It will never return to you in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you, my friend. I'm seeing you, but I'm seeing two heads. This is a misidentity. The devil wants to misrepresent you, but I'll pray for you. Huh? Your passion for God. Have good friends. If your friends are not good, leave them this night. May God give you good friends. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace for you. That anointing comes upon you, takes you to a new dimension. This is the woman. Mama, you are welcome. Let's celebrate Jesus. I'll pray for you. But there is another woman I'm talking about. There is another mama outside who needs to come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus. You have a daughter. Yes. Where is she? She's outside. She's outside. Call her. Come. Daughter, where are you? Please come. Everlasting. Shim. What's her name? Shim. Shim. Please, you had your name rush and come in. Our time is gone. Who is this? No, the woman I'm talking about has her tie. Um, it's not the same as the material. It's not the same as the material she's wearing. I'm looking for a head tie that looks close to it. Ladies, now the normal scarf that you carry and tie. But I will pray for you. Anybody that has come out, I'll pray for you. I don't know why she's here, she is, but I'll pray for you. You are already out. I'll pray for you. Please, let's, let me just minister to those that are here. I'll pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Please, you can return back to your seat. Let me talk to you. Your daughter? Um, Mama, I'm going to pray for you. The Lord is visiting your family in the name of Jesus Christ. He's visiting your family. And look at me, my dear. God is taking delay from your family. Tell your mother, this is your grandmother, right? Huh? Who is like your mother? She is oh, mine. I see. I, I, oh, I get the story now. Your real mother is dead. This is your grandmother, but she's like your mother now. Oh, I see. Because the Lord is saying I should tell your mother, whoever is that, that she's going to lift her. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Mama, God is lifting you and is wiping your tears. And the Lord is telling me that he's adding years to your life. Believe me. Who is this? Your what? Sister, but she has um, son and daughter. You have a daughter? She has a daughter, but she's my elder sister. She's your elder sister? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll talk with you. We have to really rush. Mama, in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. The God I serve will bless you. He will honor you. What do you do, my dear? I'm a student. Where? In ABU here. ABU here. I'll pray for you. God is bringing favor upon your life. Look at me. You will really be a blessing to Mama. And make sure you bless her with all your heart. In the name of Jesus, may that grace come upon you. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Bless you, Mama. Come, come, two of you. You love Jesus? Are you part of them? Come, you love Jesus? No, you are stubborn. Come, you need to be prayed for. Come, you don't love Jesus. You are, you are very stubborn, but Jesus loves you. You are a stubborn boy. You have bad friends. You don't listen. We have to pray for you. There is a spirit disturbing you. You need to be delivered. Let her go right now. Out! Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands. I command that devil. Hmm? They want to make your sister mad. Eh? What's wrong with her? It's mad, sir. She's mad. mad. Yes, sir. This is madness. She will be free right now. She came here mad. You are joking. This is koinonia. I command that spirit. She's mad. Out! You must go right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Release her hands. Release her hands. Hold me. Hold me. 
I command that madness. How can a lady like this be mad for God's sake? I command that spirit. They must leave you right now. In the name of Jesus, I set you free by the spirit of the Christ. Jesus, for your mercy, for your glory. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. Say Jesus. This lady is not just mad. This was supposed to be an initiation. Hold on, please. This is a serious issue. This is supposed to be an initiation into the occult. This is not just mad, like occult, fly. This is occult an occultic thing it's not just madness and you if they don't pray you don't listen you are small but god will help you eh? don't be angry you have to leave your bad friends you hear me if not soon now you start taking a uh, what's that thing that cough syrup huh you hear what i'm saying yes sir huh yes sir please don't be embarrassed we're not we're not here to embarrass people you get what i'm saying we're not here to embarrass people I have to pray for you. What do you do? Um, I'm bad being in Sokoto. Eh? I'm staying with my elbow in Sokoto. No, that's not what you are doing. Hold on. Why am I seeing a clipper? I'm bad being in Sokoto. You say you are staying with your brother. I'm seeing a clipper. Come. You two, two of you, God needs to help you. You are a good boy, but there, there's bad influence around your life. God even needs to visit your brother in Sokoto. Eh? You believe what I'm telling yes, you? Sir. You came from Sokoto? Yes, sir. All the way? Yes, sir. This one, where did he come from? He's staying with my mom here. He's staying with your mom? Is your mom here? No, sir. She's not here. I have to pray for you. Huh? Um, when, I'm, when I make the altar call, I'll make the altar call. Once you just hear the altar call, just run and come out. Hmm? It's time to be very serious. Jesus Christ will help you. You're a great person. Huh? You are a great person. You don't have any business doing what you are doing now. What took you to Sokoto? I went to school. Are you a student? No, sir. I have not gotten to admission yet. Your school is not Sokoto. Come back. Don't think somebody will manipulate you and do wrongs for you to get this and that because what you want to do is not very good. Eh? It's not a godly thing you want to do to get admission. Let's do things correctly. Huh? What do you want to study? Computer science. This is not computer science. I'm seeing IT. Something that has to do with, with IT. And God will bless you, but you need to settle down. Because the way you are desperate for admission now, you can you do everything. Have you written jam? Um, you are writing jam. On Tuesday. Huh? Tuesday. Well, I won't say it here. Be careful. Just be careful. You hear what I'm saying, Abby? You know what I'm saying. Yes, be careful. Eh? Because you can't want God to help you. And you're already doing arranging. You know what I'm saying now? All these funny things people do for jam. What is not your own is not your own. I'm not embarrassing you. The Lord will step in and the Lord will bless you. Just hold that lady and let me minister to you. Who is this? Please, if I don't... Yes, Mama, Mama, come. Please, if I don't call you, you don't come out. Mama, I want to pray for you. You do business. Because you are supposed to do, there is business that God has been putting in your heart. Huh? Is that true? God, I see you do business. What you are getting from civil service is not enough to take care of you. And God wants to open a door for you, a business door. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to pray for you because God wants to really give you prosperity this year. Okay, thank you. Regina, Regina, I hear a name Regina. Regina, Lord. In the name of Jesus, step into our mother's life. Do a miracle for her right now in the name of Jesus. I hear a name, Regina. Regina. Please, who is that? Do we have anybody? Outside. Regina, you are outside. There's nobody. We just move to the next case. You are Regina. Come, what do you do? I'm a salunist. You are a saloonist. I need to pray. Bad luck. God wants to take away bad luck from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Somebody's marriage was cancelled. Come out, please. Your marriage. Who is that? No, not you. Somebody's marriage. I'll pray for you. Don't worry. You were supposed to. You've even started the arrangement. They just cancelled it like this. And your heart is pain. Please come out. I want to pray for you. Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit is giving us grace. You are Regina. In the name of Jesus, God is giving you favor. Please don't sit back. This is a serious issue. In the name of Jesus, I lay hands on you. Please go back. I don't have to speak over your life. Once I lay hands on you, what do you do? I just graduated. Eh? Graduated from school. You just graduated. I have to pray for you because you love God. Yes, sir. mind is who is supposed to they've started your marriage planning please come my sister I, I don't mean to embarrass you you get what I'm saying is to speak over your life you do what category are you here for huh? Regina okay I'll pray for you who has sickle cell there's a sickler here now you are the one please indicate eh, sweetheart. come Hold my hands. Look at me. Father, please do a miracle for this lady. You have changed several genotypes in this place. Change her genotype right now. In the name of Jesus. From SS to AA. Do it for her in the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, let me pr please. Um, are you based in Zaria here? Are you part of our prayer department? Yes, sir. Please be serious eh? and pray because uh, it's not just prayer department. After Koinonia, you can meet the media and listen to the messages. They will help you. You love Jesus, but your mindset is still very serious. And you can do anything, especially men. So please, you will listen to that message and the Lord will help you. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, come. I don't know what happened. I don't want to ask you. Please don't feel embarrassed. Huh? When do you want to settle down? It was supposed to be December last year. It was supposed to be December last year. What happened? You called me and said I should forget about everything. The guy called you and just told you he's not doing again. Yes, sir. Did he give you a reason why? No reason. Okay, let me tell you. Weep not. God saved you from heartache. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please. See, let me tell you, if you don't have the eyes of the spirit, you will be fighting God not knowing. Are we together now? I'm sorry to say, don't feel bad, don't feel embarrassed. You see that guy? It was three of you. You are not the only one. You have been sensing that there's another lady. The other lady promised to do him something if he doesn't leave you. That's why he quietly called out of fear and all of that. That he's, he may be a sincere person, but him and women, is even a spirit, he needs help. Let me pray for you, that God will bring the man he has destined. You're a very nice lady. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon her. Father, send into her life the man, a, a responsible and God-fearing man. In the name of Jesus Christ, and for your shame, may my God give you double. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let me just talk to two people and then we'll... Madam, please come. That woman, can I talk to you? Please clear the way for her. Madam, please come. Please, let's pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray in the spirit. Say, Father, visit me. Madam, please look at me. I have to pray for you. Something is tying your finances down completely. Yes, sir. That's the major reason why you came. Yes, sir. Is that true? Yes, you were sir. asking the Lord to visit your finances. Yes, because everybody will see you now and think things are just working, but the truth is nothing is really working. Yes, sir. You need a serious miracle in that area. That's true, sir. Is that true? Yes, sir. Are you married? Yes, but now I'm out of Hold on. Place. Don't worry. You don't, just answer. You don't have to embarrass yourself. Because there is a spirit. Huh? This spirit brings bad luck on your life. 
people come to you and then in a few weeks or months they will now fight you this is still what happened in your marriage it's true, sir. because the man has gone yes sir eh? yes, is that true are you in your yes, husband's house now no sir you are not in your husband's house the yes, lord sir. is bringing a miracle for you amen what do you do i'm a hairdresser your hairdresser do you believe in tithing yes sir you tithe no don't feel embarrassed this is the one thing the devourer is marching in and out of your life because tithing is not in place please believe it it's not a gimmick by men of god is she your friend because i'm seeing light from you to her you know her eh? why have you not been talking to her about tithing even last week you discussed with her no 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 don't feel bad madam please look at me tithing is not a gimmick by men of god believe me you understand what i'm saying is the access points the devil is using where is your husband the man now he's at home now has he married you want to get I will discuss with you, eh, madam. This is not something we will say in public. It's a very serious mm -hmm. issue. But I need to pray for you. But for now, I need to pray for you. There is bad luck. And we need to pray against it. Please don't feel bad. God is about to change your life. Please hold my hands. In the name of Jesus. I command that spirit. See, there is a spirit that is making this thing happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go. Release her right now. That spirit leaves you. Madam, go and prosper. You will prosper in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Um, there's a baby that is sick. I have to pray for that baby. I'm seeing a baby that is very sick. Very small baby. Sick. Your child? Is she sick? Yes, sir. What's wrong with her? She's having difficulties in breathing. Difficult in breathing. Difficulty in breathing. How old is the baby? It's five months. Five months. This is not the only baby. There's another one. Come, come. I'll pray with you. What did the doctors tell you about the baby? Syndrome. They said it's what? That is Down syndrome patient. Down syndrome? Yes, sir. We soon need doctor. Ah, you are a doctor now. Down syndrome. At least I know I don't know what causes it, but I know how it does. Please come, come, come and talk to us. Give us some little education. Let's cast it. Um, it's a congenital disorder. And the difficulty in breathing is most likely coming from a congenital heart disease. It mostly manifests with congenital heart disease. Then there are other um, manifestations too. From the fishy, you can um, see some of the manifestations also. I don't know what you said, but all well, I know. <laughs> most likely, the difficulty in breathing is coming from a congenital heart disease. We're going to pray. This, this baby... believe that this child ah god do a miracle in the name of jesus hold him am i holding him right jesus christ father by the blood of jesus do a miracle in this child we change this situation in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit let there be a miracle in Jesus' name. I'm seeing one more child though. Who is that? Let's go. Please hold the child. You are the one who needs the healing first. Just hold the child. I hope the child will not cry. I have to pray for you. Huh? 
something is really fighting you eh? this is witchcraft let her go in the name of Jesus Christ I command you you know my voice in the name of Jesus she's been translated from the kingdom of darkness into light and you must let her go I'm seeing this lady in the realm of the spirit like a tree that is is refused from moving hold my hands you must be free right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ those dreams those oppressions I come against them in Jesus name let's pray for the baby what's wrong with the baby she has been coughing and stooling coughing and stooling baby how are you in the name of Jesus Christ we speak to you no more coughing in the name of Jesus Christ perfection in your body I release the power of the Holy Spirit upon you right now in the name of Jesus the power flows through this baby in Jesus name I hope the usher help out because I'm sensing this anointing even on her in the name of Jesus Christ baby we take away everything that is not of God in the name of Jesus Christ look at me where is the man in your life? Yes, Okay, I'll pray with you in the name of Jesus. I'm seeing something that is serious, but I'll talk. I'll talk about it. Okay. The Lord is showing me something that is quite serious. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. There are 13 people here. There is a strong influence of confusion and stagnation. Please listen. 13 people here right now, inside and outside. I'm going to pray for you right now. Wherever you are, as I begin to pray, it's like fire. It will come upon you. Confusion, stagnation. At least 13 people I see in the spirit. Please lift your hands. Don't say anything. Just lift your hands. I'll do the praying. Let's just flow the way the Holy Spirit is praying. Lord Jesus, I'm praying right now. By the ministry of angels. 13 people. By the influence of the spirit. I stand under this apostolic anointing and I pray right now. Wherever you are. Inside and outside right now as i pray that fire starts coming upon them right now right now bring them out 13 people 13 people by the power of the holy spirit i end it right now there are still people outside inside 13 people by the anointing of the holy spirit bring them out please right to the back right to the back right to the back right to the back i'm seeing fire it's like a spirit that would jump out of you right to the back inside outside I command that confusion outside the anointing of the Holy Ghost is resting on people. Confusion on the overflows in the name of Jesus. Confusion must come to an end right now. Delay. lift your hands i tell you there will be a mighty baptism outside outside at the count of three i want you to shout jesus when you shout it i see altars on fire are you ready now outside one two three bring them bring them fire is falling outside the bible says while men slept hear me there are things that tie the destinies of men jesus already paid the price that's why we are doing what we are doing 
the authority is that of Jesus Christ. Bring them in. Now listen. Listen. My goodness. You are going to lift your hands for your family. I see the angels of the Lord bringing deliverance for families. Listen. At the count of three, I tell you wherever you are, I like you to shout Jesus with all your heart. Some of you, you are representing an altar of God for your family. And the moment you do that, in the name of Jesus, there will be a miracle. One, Father for families, let the soul of the spirit go from the north to the south, east and the west of every family. Right now at the count of three. One, two, three. Families, 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 the sword of judgment. Pray, pray. Make sure you're praying. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now those outside, listen. I came out because your destiny must open up. Lift your hands. I came out to bring the atmosphere of God's presence. Hear me. There is no one here whose destiny has been tied that that spirit will remain. I'm going to, listen. I'm going to begin to walk around. My goodness, I see angels by my left and right. As I begin to move across this place, the fire of God will start falling. Right now, I stand under this apostolic office and I declare my hands. Right now, right now, right now. I command us right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Fire, 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 fire. Every spirit. Every devil from my left, my right, outside, outside, my left, my right, every devil right now. I stretch my hands. Every spirit. Go, 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 go. I command every spirit right now. Release them. Release them right now. Release them. Release them. Hallelujah. 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 Those of you here, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm going to shout Jesus just two times. And I see like a tornado. It's like the spirit will start moving right to the back. That's what the Lord is saying. I should shout. There are spirits dying men. It's your time to go now. Jesus, get ready now. Get ready now. Jesus, go, go, go out, out right now. My left and my right, I release spirit right now. Right now, right now, right now. Those spirits, I command them to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Out, 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 out. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I command right now, right now, I stretch my hands towards you. Every force tying you down in the name of Jesus, it must release you right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Those of you outside don't think you are missing anything at all 
That's why I came out. I'm going to all the overflows. Those of us here, you may be outside. But let me tell you something. God will step into your destiny. Please lift your hands. Because I'm seeing chains from where this camera is right to the end. I'm seeing chains. Lift your hands. I want you to shout Jesus just once at the count of three. And everybody under that influence must go right now. Please be careful with anybody close to you so that you don't stampede them. Father, I chains of bondage. But you organize this meeting to recover destinies. Therefore, at the count of three, it will come like fire on some of you. One, two, three. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. Let that go right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 The Lord is giving you a new song. A new song. The Lord is wiping your tears. You on green, lift your hands. Take it now. Receive right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Mama, the Lord is saying I should tell you he's wiping your tears. God is wiping your tears. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is saying what you could not do in five years. You mama, in five years. He's making to happen for you in one year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sir, I have to pray. There's delay in your life. The Lord wants me to break the spirit of delay. I hope you are not embarrassed, sir. No. Hold my hand, sir. Something will happen to you remarkably right now. Take it! That devil of delay. Out of his life right now. Out! Out! I don't know who this man is, but he's stepping into a new level. God is wiping the spirit of delay. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing in the spirit the name Eboyi, Eboyi State. Someone here from Eboyi State. God is bringing a miracle at my back. That person is at my back. Eboyi State. God is bringing a miracle wherever that person is. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is Margaret? Margaret. I'm hearing the name Margaret. You are in this place. Oh, no, 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 no. There's a lady here, Margaret. I'm seeing the Lord is shining. Who is that? Come, Margaret. You are Margaret. Look at me. The Lord is wiping the tears of your family. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that spirit to leave your family right now. I see a family of five ladies. None is married. A family of five ladies. The Lord is showing me. Five ladies. None is married. None is married. He's on the wheelchair. How long have you been? Seven years. What happened to you? You were shot? Oh, you're a military personnel. And you've had to leave the army because of it. Or you're still there. But then you need to walk. Wow. You can't feel... You can't feel this leg right now. Spinal cord injury. Oh, it's a spinal cord. A lumbar problem. Yes, sir. I'll pray with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a family of five ladies. Please. I have to talk. Five ladies. None of them is married. Five ladies. None is married. No one among them is married. God needs to do a miracle. Please make sure that we confirm the situation. Five ladies, so that we don't say yes. we are faking it. Please make sure. Yes, yes. Five ladies, yes, where are you from? Yes, I'm from Edo State. You are from Edo State? Yes, yes. You two? Five, you two? You are together? Oh, you are his sister? No. You are his friend? So why are you here with him? To back him up? Oh, five ladies, yes. Okay, I'm going to pray for you right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. There is a spirit that brings delay in your family. And I take authority over that spirit. 
in the name of Jesus Christ right now there's somebody around here you are into book selling bookstore business God wants to increase somebody's bookstore business here I'm sensing it I don't know if there's anybody here you are into selling of books the Lord is saying prophesy increase to that person Jordan is you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Jordan. You step into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Ah, but you are not related to him. You just came out. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the people here. I hope they can hear me. Hallelujah. There's somebody I need to pray for here. Call that lady. Call that lady. You. Don't think distance is a barrier. Believe me. God can fish you out from anywhere. Look at me. I know you are standing by the fence, but God is wiping your tears. He's giving you a new song. Right now, in the name of Jesus. I release that anointing upon you. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God has answered your prayer. You are praying that I minister to you. You and your friend. Where is your friend? Where is he? Lift up your hands, two of you. You will step into an anointing. Huh? Hold your hands together. In the name of Jesus. Look, I stretch my hands. Right now, let a fire come upon both of you. Right now, right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You step into a strange dimension. Let me talk to the people here. I want everybody to be able to know that when you come for this meeting, it doesn't matter where you are. God can visit you. No, don't worry, just, just leave the person. Grace. I hear a name, Grace. 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 There's someone with the name Grace. Is there someone like that? Grace. Grace. I need to pray for Grace. 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 And I'm hearing Garba. Garba. I'm hearing a name, Garba. God is ministering to somebody, I don't know if it's a son name or a name, Garba. In the name of Jesus, Garba, where are you? Your name is Garba? Your son name is Garba. Where is your dad? He's outside, he's in Saudi Arabia. He's, a, he's, he's in Saudi Arabia. Because I'm seeing God is saying, look at me. God is saying, I should tell you that there's going to be increase for your family. Okay. And so, are, you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. You have to be very serious with me. You are going to be very wealthy. You are going into oil and gas. Amen. Are you hearing me? I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. But I'm seeing that you are going into oil and gas. And God is going to honor you. God will bring a man into your life. Bless you. I'm seeing three people here. You are writing jam next week. Jam. No, no, not everybody. Hold on, hold on. Just relax. I'm going to pray for everybody. Here, where I'm standing. You are writing jam. Three people. writing jam somebody is writing it for the fourth time that person you are the one this will be the last time do you know me oh, come and stand what please remind me in case i forget this jam thing we have to settle it once and for all please people who are writing this thing again and again i curse that spirit this overflow, these ones looking at me, please lift your hands. Not these ones, those ones, exactly. Please lift your hands. Please don't think that because of the distance, all right, God cannot touch you. There is a reason why I'm coming out with this, because sometimes inside is just a fraction of those outside. And I want you to feel a sense of belonging, to know that God is able to visit you and to minister to you. Hallelujah. Those outside here there are at least two of you fire is coming upon you right now i see the power of darkness being broken lord where are they right now i stretch hands in the name of jesus christ i stand upon this anointing wherever they are father there is a lady right now it's like fire is coming upon you right now right now right now in the name of jesus christ that fire is coming upon you all of you standing here, I prophesy to you in the name that is above all names. Hear me. Whatever has tied your progress, I'm talking to those here. 
I stand under this anointing and I declare a change of story right now. Benway State. There's someone here from Benway. Benway. Um, Benway State. You have an elder brother. Please make sure that you don't come out. We are not faking this thing. Please. You have an elder brother. Where? God is visiting your family, visiting your family in strange ways, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, that if you seek him with all your heart, he will surprise you. I hear what I'm saying, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you, by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm seeing a lot of families here under financial stagnation and the Lord is saying release them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please listen, listen. Please believe what I'm saying. Don't come and waste your time. God brought you here to wipe your tears. Any family here, you have tried and tried and tried. Doors have refused to open. I open it for you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see somebody here, you are looking for a job, June. Um, you are looking for a job in Abuja by June. I see a job coming. This is what God is saying. I don't know who I'm speaking, but God is meaning somebody. Your name is Grace. Where is your mother? Kogi State. I need to pray for you because there's wisdom. I take authority over that spirit. Of Jesus. I need to pray for somebody, two of you. I want you to follow me. You smoke this thing. Um, what's the name of that? It's not just dab out. Weed. Please, don't be embarrassed. Two of you, you really smoke it. You love the Lord, but this thing is a challenge. Please follow me. Your deliverance has come. You smoke weed. Your own is not just uh, all that cigarette. Please, don't be embarrassed. Follow me and I'll... I'll pray for you. And brother here, listen. listen. God is speaking to you. You came for koinonia, but you left a lady in your room. You left a lady in your room. You told her you are coming for koinonia and you will come back. Please, don't destroy yourself and destroy that lady because your going back now is to get that lady pregnant and you'll be in trouble. God is saving you. Send her a text now to go home. You are born again one once i make altar call wherever you are please march to the front in the name of jesus hallelujah the power of god is coming on some ladies here i've seen in some at least three ladies severe menstrual pain this is not this is something that for one of you is in your family lift your hands please just here this region Right now, the fire of God is going to come on some ladies. I take authority over that spirit. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Right now. Right now. I curse that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. A lady will feel like fire on her stomach right now. It will come upon you like fire. I take authority over it. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And there is a lady that the Lord is showing me. For four months, you have not seen your period. Four months, you have not seen your period. I think you need to talk to your friend to help you because before the end of this meeting is returning. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see someone's family um, like relative in prison. There's somebody here like that in prison one of your relatives i don't know if it's in a police station or prison something like that god is doing a miracle who is that there's somebody like that you're the one come who is in prison your nephew are you sure which prison is in gobe state how long is his tenure five years how many years has he done one one year we are going to pray for mercy. You will not reach five days. We are going to bring him out. You believe that? Yes. Lift your hands for him. And let the name of Jesus step in and give him the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your hands, my dear. Look at me. I'm seeing a crown being put on your head. You, this 
Are you hearing me? God is bringing her to a new dimension of grace. Father, I stretch my hands to her right now. Right now. That fire comes upon you right now. In the name of Jesus. Let me talk to the lady with the pink cap. You, lift your hands. Beauty for ashes. That's what God is saying is bringing. Beauty for ashes. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is bringing a restoration to your family. Your family is experiencing a restoration. In the name of Jesus. Joseph. Joseph, I hear you. Joseph. Joseph, you are wearing a short Joseph is wearing a short dress. Joseph. I'll pray for you, but the Joseph is inside you now. Who is that? Come out. Your name is Joseph. I will pray for you. God wants to lift you. Lift your hands. Something will come on you. You are a student. You are a papa. God is wiping you. In the name of Jesus Christ, a new dimension of grace. Your Joseph. Look at me. What are you studying? Are you a student? You are done with German. What you want to study? I think engineering. Agri. You are going to be a businessman. And God is going to honor you. In the name of Jesus. Joseph John, where is he? Come. Why did you stop doing business? There's an anointing for you. Go back and the Lord will honor you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come. Where is your mother? Where is the village? The Lord is saying, I should tell you, the way he would lift you, all those who know you will be surprised. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord will lift you. Eh? Because I'm seeing your story similar to that of Esther in the Bible. Go and read the story of Esther. How that God can pick somebody who is supposedly nothing. Someone's sister here is married. Who is that person? Barren. The Lord is saying it's time for the child. I will praise you. Not you or your sister. And I will your praise sister is barren. You. How many years? Six years. You follow me. How, how many years? I will Eleven years. Two of you come. The Lord is responding. You too. Please follow me. Madam, look at me. Confusion is ending in your life. Come. Come. The Lord is bringing an end to confusion in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, everyone, lift your voice and pray and say, Father, you are changing my story. There is a habit God is setting you free from. It's a terrible habit right now. Be free. It's not a habit you should practice at all. God is setting you free from it. Somebody here has eye problem. No, no, no. Not eye. I'm going to there's somebody here with eye problem. Your eye pains you if you see light. Who is that person? I'm coming up with status is changing. I'll bring no more desire. You get discouraged easily. God is saying that you should be sure not be discouraged. Who is the person, please? Lay your hands on your hands. Status is changing. No Step into your Let's go. I'm on my way to better Those days, please follow me. No the Lord is bringing you to a new dimension. I'm on my way to better I'm on my way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Lord wants to release certain kinds of miracles right now. Who are all these people following me, please? Hold on. The Lord wants to release fruitfulness. Please be sensitive, everybody, inside and outside. He's using children as a point of contact. 
but this will affect every other area's life every other body's um how many years six six years your sister yes where is she she's in zara how about you 11 years oh my god my auntie. 11 years ah. why didn't they come for the miracle service she's in abuja no 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 please don't don't just come out carelessly please please Okay, come out. The Lord is asking me to let you come out. Please. I'm going to pray for the sick, but barrenness issue. Let's deal with it right now. Tonight, I want God to step into people's lives. I think you should honor what Jesus is doing in this place. Look at the number of issues. Believe me when I tell you there will be testimonies. If you are standing here for yourself, just move this way. If you are standing for yourself, move this way, please. So that I know. Please, just move here. I will worship him forever. Love me forever because this is God. Please, this way, just let there be a separation. My, my brothers and sisters, please see how many people the devil is tying down. The Lord is bringing you into an anointing. It's a healing anointing that is coming on you. I see an angel of the Lord pouring like oil upon your head. You, you looking at me something is being activated in your spirit man step into that oil that fountain is that healing anointing koinonia please i want you to know that this is a platform that god has created to wipe the tears of men as we gather there every week god is doing something please be patient with god tonight and let him do something in your life because I have to pray for the sick. I'm only going to lay hands on those who are standing here for themselves. Because I want them to return with the testimony. But for all of us who are connecting for other people. You, lift your hands. You, out! Right now! Right now! It's a curse upon the family. You are going by the spirit of the living God. Right now, you are a devil of darkness. I see you in the spirit and there must be that release right now. Please, those of us here, talk to the Lord on behalf of your loved ones and say, Lord, you must change your story. You must change your story. Those of us here, I'm going to lay hands on you by you. Please pray. Thank you, Jesus. All right, lift your hands, everyone, here. This category just lift your hands please for time's sake i may not be able to lay hands on you but i want you to believe something is happening to you that is happening to your loved ones you need to call them and believe many of you are receiving for your loved ones my goodness i hear the cry of children father in the name of jesus christ let there be a miracle right now right now right now right now right now receive it for your loved ones receive it right now I open wombs, I open wombs, I open wombs. In the name of Jesus, I open wombs. I command a remembrance. A remembrance right now. In the name of Jesus. Right here, we declare miracle children. For your loved ones. Miracle children. They take in right now. And nine months after now, they give birth to their children. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please go back to your seat. God bless you. God bless you. Those who are standing here, I'm going to pray for you. Please make sure you are married. If you are not married, please don't embarrass yourself. Go back to your seat. Praise the Lord. Let me pray for those who are standing for themselves. We have to pray. That's why you came. Hallelujah. Remember the testimony that God gave a woman who had been barren for eight years. How many years? Eight solid years. And God gave her triplets. They are still alive till today. Triplets. 
triplets. Please, I want you to believe God. If you are standing husband and wife, no problem. You are standing for your wife, no problem. Just make sure you are married. That's the only thing we are saying. Please. I'm going to pray for you. Stretch your hands over them and pray because we will release fruitfulness right now. In the name of Jesus. I don't care what the problem is. Jesus is stepping in. My confidence. The source of my strength. You. The strength of my life. You. My hope and my joy. You. Hey, my confidence. You. I looked around and I suddenly realized. That you've been so good to me. Your mercy is everlasting, undenying, overwhelming. I tell you, celebrate God because this will end. Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you hear my call when I call you? Who am I that you are mindful of me? Who am I that you hear my call? The source of my strength are you. The strength of my life are you. My hope and my joy are you. Yeah, My confidence are you. The source of my strength are you. The strength of my life are you. My hope and my joy my confidence, hey, I exalt you, oh Lord, I exalt I release this miracle. Madam, go and return back with your child. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let this womb be open. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus. Madam, you are coming back with a testimony. What is there has been removed. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord wipes your tears. Right now in the name of Jesus. Where is your husband? Sir, please stand near your wife. There's a reason why the Lord is asking. Can you hold her hands? Hold on. I don't care what the doctors say. You are returning with your testimony. The Lord is giving you a baby girl and then a baby boy. I know you want a boy, but God is giving you a baby girl first and then a boy in the name of Jesus. Make sure you come and testify. God bless you. In the name of Jesus, a miracle. A miracle. But there are still three more cases we'll deal with very fast we'll pray for this just for one minute and then I'll begin to prophesy there are people who have not yet received what they came for here please just be patient with us please this is a miracle service right so that we can justify our coming please let's rise we'll just do this in one minute I'd like you to believe stretch your hands here right now stretch your hands in one minute and let's pray in the name of Jesus Christ stretch your hands towards the prayer request and let's pray prophesy over it your request is here Lord we turn it into a testimony please make sure those outside their requests are here too if they are here to collect your request just wave it inside and outside and somebody will come and attend to you 
Are you praying? Prophesy. Father, this must become a testimony in my life. This must become a testimony in my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you answer prayers in this place. Shebakarota supra di shebere bosh. Grabada balaraba shabranda gadabele de bosh. Let there be miracles, oh God. Let there be breakthroughs, oh God. Supernatural miracles. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Miracles. Upon miracles. Miracles. Visit everyone. Visit issues of concern. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I prophesy over this request in the name that is above all names. That every request represented here, no matter how impossible it is, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, let every dead situation here come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, my God, we sang that you are not a man. Turn every captivity here. Turn every captivity here. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want to prophesy to us. Please lift your hands. Um, you don't have to bring them out. It will be... Just give me 10 more minutes, but it's going to be extensive prophecy. Extensive prophecy. I want to speak to you because... I know the things that I see things in the spirit that have not yet been received we have to pray in the name of Jesus please I want you to believe God and lift your hands lift your hands hallelujah the Lord is starting off with direction there are people here who came praying Lord what is the next step of my destiny wherever you are I'm prophesying to you as I speak fire will come upon you just on your head some of you will start feeling fiery sensations on your ears. The Lord is bringing direction right now. I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Right now. Right now. Supernatural direction. Help that guy. In the name of Jesus. Every confusion in your life. Those outside, make sure you participate. Someone is asking, oh God. What is the next step? I pray by this anointing, receive direction right now. Receive direction right now. In the name of Jesus. Someone's marital destiny is under siege. Right now, in the name that is above all names. An anointing, a yoke breaker anointing. I prophesy, receive it right now. I open those doors right now. Inside, outside. I open those doors right now. Hallelujah. There's someone praying. You are asking God for money for rent. Rent. The Lord is telling me that between now and Monday morning, there is a miracle coming for you. There is a miracle coming for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There are ladies who have, even guys, this spell of disfavor. Please listen. In the name of Jesus, you will literally feel like something being wiped out of your face. I see many people being affected by this. Lord, where are they? That mark of disfavor by this anointing right now. Right now, I break that mark. Right now, inside, outside, in the name of Jesus. I tear off that mark. Kaparataka Latosia. That mark of disfavor. That embargo of bad luck upon your life that makes things not to work. I come against it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, you have come to the end of your road. 
and if God does not step in there will not be any way out I pray for you that door closed over your destiny that will not allow you move to the next level I stand under this anointing in this miracle service and I prophesy I command that door to open right now oh come on believe it believe it I command that door to open Shakatata. I command that door to open. Swing open. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has been emerged from heaven to enter your hand. And is yet to enter your hand. Please stretch your hands towards me. Shalakataya. In the name that is above all names. I stretch my hands back. Receive it right now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it right now. Everything that must enter your hand, inside and outside, I command it from the realm of the spirit. I deliver it to your hands in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that has refused to grow in your hand, ideas, businesses, Please listen. Everything that has refused to grow in the name that is above all names, return and cause it to grow. Return and cause it to grow. I command that business grow. I command your family grow. I command your finances grow. I command your ministry grow. hallelujah i pray for you you hear me pray this all the time because i've seen what it can do in the life of a man where are your destiny helpers if there is one prayer you must receive in this place listen god can use men to help a man and in one day god can bring the right people to wipe your tears lift your hands in the name of jesus the son of the living god where you have struggled and struggled with no hope of help as you lift your hands let an anointing from heaven land upon your life and call help us right now right now right now i release that anointing upon you for help for help for help for help take it receive it the anointing listen all you need in your life one person can just tell you do a b c or i know a who can do b for you and it can open you up to a whole new world one more time i pray i call them from the north the south if they are in zaria here we call them if they are in kaduna state we call them any part of nigeria receive their ministry now receive their ministry now whoever has vowed to destroy your life i'm praying oh this is judgment in the name that is above all names if there is any human entity standing i declare let this night be a night of judgment let this night be a night of judgment let this night be a night of judgment listen when pharaoh refused to allow egypt israel go god took his firstborn whatever must be taken from your enemy to let you go we take it tonight in the name of jesus hear me let me tell you the truth there are men that hold the destinies of people low i teach you principles of success but i'm spiritual enough to know a man's destiny can be kept at a standstill whoever kept your destiny at a standstill in the name that is above all names i put an anointing upon you go forward go forward go forward go forward go forward 
in the name of Jesus go forward I prophesy in your career go forward in every area of your life hallelujah let me speak over our finances you see what is happening around the nation father we believe in the power to prosper and we believe in favor ah there is such a thing my brother and my sister called favor lift your hands my god and my king that anointing for favor that was on joseph that anointing that made five loaves and two fish to feed five thousand people wherever you are may that anointing come on your life right now Kaparatata is coming on people. May that anointing come upon you. It comes upon you right now. Hallelujah. Some of us are moving, but our pace is too slow. That's the truth. We need acceleration. We are moving, but your pace is too slow. There are things you should do in two weeks, not three years. There are things you should do in one day. I'm praying for you. The Bible says, And the hand of God came upon Elijah. And he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. The anointing that must come upon you, that between now and next month miracle service, what has not happened from when Koinonia started, may the God that I serve release it into your life. I command speed 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 i prophesy it speed hallelujah all those writing jam lift your hands it's time for you to move forward if you are not writing you can stand in for somebody maybe your loved ones or whatever in the name of jesus the bible says and when they were tested in all matters of wisdom hear me Daniel was found 10 times better. That 10 times better unction. As you write your jam, may the angel of wisdom cause you to pass this jam in the name of Jesus. There are people who suffer and read and sit there in front of that computer and don't know what to do. You will know what to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm led to pray for those in final year. I don't know why, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. We need to release you. There are things that have come up. Some of us, physically speaking, is obvious there is trouble. Where is that God who can correct a man's mistake? I pray for you. In the name that is above all names. You will graduate this year. I said you will graduate this year. I don't know how it will happen, but you must graduate this year. Hallelujah. The secret, receive this, two more and we are done. The secret, the ideas, the strategy you need for the next level of your life. I'm praying for you. Please lift your hands. There will be a strong impartation. God is releasing anointings for creativity. Some of you, it will come upon you. You will not know why. But when you sleep, you will see it in dreams. My God, I'm praying. I see this thing falling on at least 40 people. In the name that is above all names. That anointing for creativity. Receive it right now. Right now, right now, right now. An impartation. An impartation, an impartation, an impartation, inside, outside, inside, outside. Take it, take it, take it. Creativity, ideas, I send them from the spirit. Concept, right now, right now. Business ideas, career ideas. Hallelujah. 
Now, I'm going to pray the last prayer. Breakthrough. You don't know what breakthrough is, some of you. Let me tell you what breakthrough is. Breakthrough is when the barrier standing between you and the next level is not lifted, destroyed. If it's lifted, it can appear in your future. Please listen. Some of us, what you need is breakthrough. You don't even know the name of the situation you are in. But I pray. At the count of three, I want everybody to just shout breakthrough as loud as you can and something remarkable will happen i'm seeing rain falling that's what i'm saying father this is the instruction you gave me as we shout hey, yeah, 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 yeah. somebody's husband husband somebody's husband is receiving breakthrough somebody's husband husband at the count of three one two three yes lord receive it receive it receive it malakata baba breakthrough breakthrough i smash those barriers breakthrough in the name of jesus breakthrough i mark you with an anointing that anywhere they see you they will be compelled to bless you listen to what i'm saying i mark you with an unction i mark you with a mystery and i command that anywhere they see you may they bless you anywhere you enter may this anointing force men to bless you Anywhere you travel to, may this anointing distinguish you. Isaac blessed his son and said, the smell of my son is like the field. Brothers and sisters, hear me. There is a fragrance that can come upon a man that will force men to bless you anyhow. I don't know who must appear to bless you. But I'm saying it again. In the name of Jesus, I mark you with a mystery that forces men to bless you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. We hope this message was a blessing to you. We need to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain